bring the meeting to order. Is there any changes or additions to the agendas presented? I have a couple. Okay. Uh, Tuesday night live committee wanted to bring up a couple uh, points and update us. Uh, Howard Romero. Okay. Uh, I've got some facility use agreements uh, from the library for the field. Okay. Uh, I attended a conference on Thursday and Friday of last week. I've got a couple developments I'd like to update the board on. Okay. And then we had two of them. One of the Historical Society power washing the building. Yep. And uh, I think it was Whiting Cemetery. Or, or maybe it was Evergreen, all cemeteries. I think it was all cemeteries. Okay. I don't think it. He was asking about that. Okay, so I got those. Everything else. Are there any other additions or changes? See, no. Okay, are we prepared to approve the meeting minutes of May 13th? And May 6th. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a change to the May 6th. So okay. I think we're going to just approve, uh, make a motion to approve them and do the uh, change afterwards. Or? Well, if you want to make a motion on May 6th first, uh, May 13th is the, the, the uh, dog hearing. Dog hearing. Uh, what? What's the board's preference? Do you want to approve those meeting minutes as well? Okay. I guess the, the dog hearing ones, I don't think are really finished yet since you didn't finish them right. tonight. So I mean, I just set them out because my guess to see them when I sent them to all the so, impression to approve those. Right. Okay. Would the board entertain tabling it until next yeah. meeting? Okay, yes. good. The May 6th meeting, uh, I would look for a motion to approve and then, Mike, you can suggest some changes. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Mike? Uh, page four. I kind of misspoke. Uh, it should have been one person on call. I did say two, but I, I should have said one. We never had two people on call at once. There was always one on call. Probably. We're, we're in the pages. It'd be the third paragraph down, or um, not the full third paragraph, but into the third paragraph. Okay. Page four. You got that, Donna? I think I got that. So, so I guess that's the kind of thing where you really said to last time, but maybe I should have like in brackets that at the next meeting, Mike corrected himself and said it was really one. Whatever. <laughs> we, we can. We can correct it right now to one. Well, this is what you actually did say, though. Yeah, I did say. That. Yeah, but, it really but didn't say you're, you want to make a correction that your intent was to say one. one. Yeah. Can you make that? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Any other comments on the meeting minutes? a friendly amendment. You see that friendly in second? Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify the same light. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Rosemary, you get the floor. Okay, let me back to the board. Today we're at 80% spent. And during the current month, we received our. Um, Maintenance and grand list from the state. Like $11,636. Okay. Uh, we have a total of $11,636. Mm -hmm. How much for less? Mm -hmm. $400. Uh, 400 uh, okay. Okay. Notice in the school, and we've got quite a bit more than what 
Okay. Good. Uh, Rosemary, we uh, the board had talked about dedicating the June third meeting to the joint meeting with the village. Well, so, Robert, I can just, I can just hand it out and we can go over it later. Okay. And we're back on. It looks like it's going to work out okay, okay. but uh, Meredith and I are going to try and prepare a draft agenda, uh, you know, to send out for approval. But okay. Anything else? Well, of course, it's pretty standard. Okay. No surprises. Not yet. Not yet. Not until I do the in-depth study. Mm. And um, the fourth installment taxes were due May 10th, and to date we're 96.64 percent collected for the year. And that leaves uh, delinquent out to 159,000. Okay. And I gave you a list of those items as of today. There's some pretty high numbers on that delinquent, you know. Right? Is this normal? This many people? Yes. Okay. And we had our tax sale on the 15th, and the town sold three properties to an, an individual. And last year the tax sale was on June 12th. So on June 13th, the town will be an owner of four trailers. Um, Angela sent out the final notice saying that they will no longer be owning that property as of June 13th to give them one last chance to redeem. I figured there'd be one, but it would be four. Yeah. One is empty and the other three that I know I still think it's mm -hmm. That's all of that. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Seeing none. Thank you, Rosemary. Brian, you got the floor. There's a couple of things. Well, you have the report in front of you. But there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. One of them was the paving plans for this year and next year. I wanted to shim and overlay Footbrook, part of Westcombe, and possibly the bottom of Prospect Rock this year with the intention on next year getting a class two paving grant and reclaiming plot road so we'll mill up that pavement and fix, fix that road mm -hmm. that'll take a good chunk of money so i'm just trying to do those get those shimmed over overlaid this year and then next year we'll take a good chunk of that money and maybe some of the next years to, to do the plot road okay. yeah and then I only printed one copy of the quote from Clark's for the new truck. So there's the quote. The price for that truck from Clark's hasn't risen since we bought the last one last year. That's only that last year's price is only in effect till the 23rd of this month. So it's only a couple more days. That's 149,000. Last year we paid 161,000. The drop in price is reflective on the better trade in that we had this year. Mm -hmm. And the fact that yeah, the truck didn't go up, so the trade in was fourteen thousand dollars better than last year. And the price of the body went up three twenty five hundred dollars, I believe. How much will it go up if we wait? He said three percent after the twenty third. Three percent. So what are you looking for us tonight from us tonight? Authorization? Ideally, yeah. Uh, this is in our capital plan. True, but it's not in the budget until next uh, next year's July first, next fiscal. But when would the bill come in? Yep. Next winter. The delivery okay. time will be in the fall. It, getting them kitted out and everything takes several months. Uh, before it's ready for pickup. 
is delivery time to us the same thing as purchase time to the dealer? No, we won't be expected to pay anything until we're ready to pick it up. Right. Right. They it's carry ready everything. for us to pick up. They carry the body and their truck until we take the delivery of the truck. What's the board's pleasure? They want to, you want to uh, realize that savings? And did you get your back about the other kit or? I did not. I was getting another price from another dealer. Not that I want to switch. I mean, we've had a long-term relationship with Clark and I don't want to switch, but I just wanted to get a price just mm -hmm. to make sure, you know, we're getting what we should be. Well, yeah, there was a little difficulty because the truck that we're trading in has been in the shop for the last week and a half. So that other company hasn't had a chance to look at it. Mm -hmm. We just got it back today, so they'll come and look at it, you know, in the next couple of days. But like I was telling Brian, it would have to be a really remarkable price for us to switch and change our affiliation. Right. Because they're, they've been really good to us service-wise and, you know, they're, they've been really good. So we expect that to be the price that we're going with, but if there's a significant savings to be had, we'll consider it, but it's unlikely, uh, both timing wise and, uh, you know, we have, per we periodically have in the past have asked for, uh, you know, what, where would, what a similar truck would cost at another dealer. And, We've always gone with Clarks. So that we've never been able to save enough money to make it worth, you know, having a relationship with somebody that's farther away. That's gonna, you know, every time we have to take it in for service, it's gonna take another, you know, forty-five minutes out of the day. So it's never been worth it. So it probably isn't this time either. So if they can't get a competing bid in before the twenty-third, uh, I think we should just go with Clarks. But I'd like to. The board's authorization that if we can get it for significantly less, and if Brian and I think it's going to be worth the amount we save, uh, to go with the competing bid. Yeah. So if we make, I mean, it's uh, three percent is four thousand, almost five hundred dollars. If we make the commitment on this truck in the next few days, so yeah, we're not going to delay it. Right. So I would move that we. Um, We'll authorize the ex execution of the purchasing. Authorize the purchase of the truck. Right. Um, and, and unless between now and then you get a much better quote from someone else. Any more discussion? We've got a motion and a second. I'm wondering how you decide how you decide how, what's much better. Is it distance too? You know, it, it, uh, uh, significant uh, amount of this will be how much time is it going to take for us to take a vehicle out for service? You know, how much additional time are we going to spend on it each time it has to go up? It gets to be harder to assess. Mm -hmm. Do you not feel comfortable making this motion? Oh, I, I would just make the most we buy it from Clarks. <laughs> okay, duly noted. Any other comments? Do you want the total amount you're authorizing to be spent in the motion? Or just buy a truck from Clark? That's the amount of the quote. What is the amount of the quote? Yeah. The last page. 149. For an amount not to exceed 150000 Sounds good. Sounds good. So show the motion reflecting not to exceed 150,000. Any other discussion? Oh, we're voting on that. Sure. Probably should. All those in favor, sing five, saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Go forth. Anything else? That was it. Anybody have any questions for Brian? I just wanted to say that we met about Old Mill Park, about the walking path, and um, there doesn't, there isn't any 
obstruction in the past that needs to be really cut away, but it does seem pretty clear that it needs to be firmed up by the chloride mm -hmm. treatment. So Brian was gonna look into doing that. Um, Once we get things set up and it dries up a little bit, and I can drive around their own. Mm -hmm. I'll treat it. Good. They won't firm up a lot of the stuff where the fines are already gone and there's just the loose stone on top, but it will take care of some of the grass and it'll, you know, it'll firm up the stuff that still has fines at the surface. Anybody else got anything, Brian? Um, I just wanted to note that Brian uh, and I were at a uh, meeting of our local um, Emerald Dash here. Emerald Ash Borer Preparedness Group. Emerald Ash Borer is in Washington County now and it's in uh, Grand Isle County. So it's uh, on both sides of us. Um, and it's very likely here already. If it's not, it will be soon. Um, there are, our preparedness team has uh, done an inventory of all the trees, all the ash trees in our right of way. And it's in our Emerald Ash Borer Preparedness Plan. That's on the website. There are 2,500 trees in our highway right of way. Um, and once uh, trees are infected, they become really dangerous to, to cut down. Um, they behave in unpredictable ways. Um, so it moves us to cut down trees before they get infected. Um, that runs into some legal predicaments and questions of whether you can whether it uh, uh, has whether you can de declare it to be a hazard tree before it's infected with the AB, no, it probably will be infected with the AB. So um, I don't know. I, I pointed out this um, sort of bullet points of, of concerns and things that I think that we need to consider, um, and I think we need to start prioritizing the cutting of um, ash trees in our right of way. I'd like to get your feedback on this, but I would start with um, ash trees that are in the right of way on municipally owned land, that we could do that without landowner mm -hmm. permission, just whether it's Lightway Lane or um, wherever else. There's ash out here in the parking lot um, that it would probably be a good, good idea to take down. I think that'd be a good, good way to get the public's attention too. Yeah, right. Because it, it seems like a lot of people don't understand that 99 point whatever percent of trees are going to die. And for us, in the, in the few years that it's going to take for them to die, we're not going to be able to come to take all the trees down that are going to be a hazard in the right of way. Right. So we need to start doing some every year. I mean, 2,500 is a lot. What are you, and you got a lot of other things to do as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> How much of a dent do you think you could put in that? I really haven't sat down and figured out a plan, so I don't. Depends on the weather, you know, depends on this. Like, this was a terrible spring for getting stuff done. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the weather. Okay. But I mean, I think we can start prioritizing things that um, trees that are in higher density populated areas versus trees that are way out in the sticks. Um, trees that are clearly in poor condition, and you, you know, you guys are out there, you can evaluate that. Um, so trees that are in the village, trees that are on municipally owned land or in parks or, you know, at the edge of mm -hmm. Mill Park or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it, anyway, food for thought. Um, and maybe we need to put in some money for the budget next year to actually start being a little more aggressive with cutting back of trees and the rights away because once it hits it's going to be uh, it's going to be expensive so where do you park them after they're gone oh, that's we're trying bad. to develop a site probably at, at the dome um, but a lot of the stuff what they're doing now is they're just leaving it in place cut it down and leave, you know leave it in place if it's in the woods you know if, if we can do so mm -hmm. maybe burned locally yeah. Just can't transport it. What is there a distance that you can't transport or I'm not sure. Might be within the county. Only within the county, right? You can't go outside the county. Are our loggers cutting 
Ashley to um, some of them. market for it. There's still, well, last time I talked to a logger, there was still a market for it. Which I don't, I don't understand why a lot of people are, you know, cut more of their ash trees now. But there, there is still a market. And some people are cutting, but not very many. Mm -hmm. A lot of the answers are in the preparedness plan that's that's mm -hmm. online too. So, um, we also thought it would be value in having uh, Susan come in, lover, to us or to the. Oh, you had it on your note just into our meeting. Um, yeah, well, since we're talking about it now, I'm not okay. sure, but I, I know she was going to talk to you and, and your guys, which I think would be valuable. She's going to come and talk to us. Okay. And I reached out to LCPC, and we're gonna. Oh yeah. We're gonna try to get. Rob said he would get some of the people that gave the presentation in Stowe mm -hmm. to come and give a presentation to the foreman's meeting. To all the different foreman's of the local towns. It would be great. Good. Anything else, for Brian? Do you have anything in your agenda while Brian's here? Uh, we've got the employee compensation adjustment. I don't think Brian needs to be here, but if anybody has uh, questions for Brian, then okay. you could stay for that. But like I said, I, I, I feel I've got a pretty good handle on that, so okay. I don't think I, I need him. Pretty you, straightforward. You don't probably feel like you have to be here for that, right? I don't need to be here. Okay. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any planning commission, Howard? <laughs> oh, LCBC? Any planning commission, local or uh, county? Uh, well, I'm not on the local planning commission, but I'm certainly on the Senate board of the LCBC. Not that I'm aware of. Um, no. But I'm here for another reason. Yep, we got you on the agenda. Okay, you do? When? Yep. Uh, right at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> uh, we'll probably. Pat DeVassa, then we'll go to Howard. Sure. Okay. okay. I got nothing to do here in there. <laughs> so we're also going to your report. Okay. So I've got this. Uh, the first thing is Vassa's request uh, that covers part of our soon to be light industrial park. Uh, the map didn't copy very well, so I've got just the, the one copy that was provided to me. Um, so it's, uh, do I understand right that, that it's really the same as where you were traveling in the past? It's not, is this a new? It's where Bass is traveling right now. Yeah. Uh, it's just now it's town property. Uh, so it goes, if you remember our parcel, it's kind of a big rectangle on top with a narrow access to Route 15. Uh, the Vasa Trail goes up that narrow access, and then once it opens up, it goes east and then north along the edge of the property up to where it connects to Drag Lot Road. Correct. No, no, no. no. It does that. No? No. no. It connects to Tom Foster and Oh, Tom Foster, it crosses over Tom Foster's land out of uh, uh, the power line yeah. up on the other side. And, and then it contains the drag law. This is a little better. I don't know if it. This is the oh, problem. That's right here. on the third page over here. Yeah. And yeah, I was just. So basically, it's Tom Foster's the bulk of it. I had just yeah. forgotten. Well, you know, we would kind of like to hang to the right of the Bass Trail. Just so we're not muddying up their trail, and and when, when the town does go up, is it, you know, if, if we're still allowed to to use part of that land, we're we're not in the way of their road building, or mm -hmm. we, we we would like to go up into the woods and cut directly behind those houses, and then go up and follow the edge of the field into where the bass trail looks into. It. It, and from where you hit Route 15, that's a dead end to the gas station? Yes, that's all it would be. Okay. Maybe 10 people a weekend would come down and get gas, but right now there's no place to get gas here. 
Good. I uh, spoke to the Jolly's manager. They're very excited about it, if it could happen. Um, we've also spoke to several people in the co-op office. They were very excited if it could happen. And we've talked to them about a possible parking area mm -hmm. for the, uh, some people that come to the area and create more commerce. I just have a, there's never, there's, I live off in Dragwell Road. There is no defined distance for Drag Lot Road. There is no defined markers of where Drag Lot Road is. This is a house lot that was there 80 years ago. So it doesn't appear to go on my land. On my map, it's not on. Every map's a little different. Most of the people that are gone by that know where it is. I know where I was told where it was, but I think uh, the town needs to say, here's the road, this is the length of it, because drag lot road just doesn't go to infinity. There's an end. There's a width, you know, and right now there's absolutely no indication of where this road is, except at the top which I use to fire my driveway, there's a sign. Is Dragalot Road a class three or class four? Four, four. class four. Okay. The official map is downstairs of how long the road is, where it's laid out. And that's so okay. Awesome. Is, are we able to get it laid out? I mean, because- That would cost money. I don't well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to allow ATVs and potential new homeowners to hook onto a class four road, there should be an indication of where the road is. So all the maps that I've seen have shown it ending on the maps on Mr. Foster's land. And that goes with your map, that goes with Google Earth, um, several other map companies with non historic maps, mm -hmm. they show the same thing. Now, they don't actually, on the Vermont historic maps, does not show the property boundaries. But when you overlay another map over it, it shows it into the surveyed map of the property boundary ending at the old home site. There is a foundation down in there. I found it. It puts it nearly on the uh, Hoyer's land. It actually it ends on, well, I don't know if Joe Padula still owns the old horse farm or not. Whoever owns that. Is actually where that one sits. Yes, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's over so, here. So, like yeah. I said, it doesn't affect four wheelers. Don't, I own four. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, I think that there should be a consensus of the landowners and the town of where this road is. That's all I'm asking. Uh, I, don't, I, I think it's a fair request. We've had some issues lately. Because Planning Commission apparently is discussing it, Charlie Gallon, Dirk Taylor. It so the road runs through my property. And so he came and drove out and got stuck in the mud down there. And so we pulled him out. And he's like, Oh, I'm on class four road. And we're like, Yeah. So it's just it would be nice to my map shows as 140 feet, other maps show different. So it would be nice to actually know where it is. Now your maps, your town maps, they are not GPS maps by any stretch. They're old town plot maps. And they're they're run are filed with the state, so those are the official maps. Yeah, we do have a. I don't have a off hand, but I there is a designated distance or length of dry lot road. Yep, yeah. uh, and it is recorded. I, I just don't know what it is off the top of my hand, but I'd be happy to look that up with you, and so we can get the. It's this many feet long, and it's. Historically, generally, this direction. Right. Um, and like I said, I took I took Pat and we walked yeah, right down through. Walk. And we walked down through, and you can enter the woods, and you can peer to what the road where it was. And but and then it disappears. And once you get into the log area, it completely disappears, where it's been logged. And I don't know what the total length from the from Gould Hill, where I'm assuming the start is, to where it enters. If Katie said her map shows it's whatever the distance you said, 
Well, maybe it doesn't go as far as we thought. Just because there's a homestead there doesn't really mean the town road went to the homestead. You know, the town road doesn't go to my house. And, you know, I mean, it, it, so that's why I'm saying, I think, as long as there's a recorded land, are we going to go with what we see cut into the woods as, as the road? Is that what we're going to go with? Now, there also should be some pin identifiers, I'm assuming. There are properties left and right of that. Or there used to be. The, the, pins are, the pins on the land are there. And, and I have a question. Like I said, I, it doesn't come on where it, it will affect. I just, as one of the landowners that is attached to that road. And we don't want property. We don't want to put a trail on. You know what I mean? As one of the landowners that's attached to the road. <laughs> I would think it'd be fair to know where, where, it, is. where it is. And Tom Foster, I wish he was here, uh, there was an established where the four wheelers have been going forever, coming up the pole line and coming out through. Well, he doesn't want them on his driveway. He wants to send them down right. past ours. Mm -hmm. Which again is a class four town road. To your, to your right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not debating that. I mean, that's, I that's the reason I entered. I, I put a driveway in because it's a class four town road and I was able to come off it. So, so I haven't been on that road in years, but it used to be pretty, most class four highways, if you walk down them, it's pretty obvious where the highway used to be. Yep. Is that still the case there? And as this one goes, as he yeah. said, it goes a little more right than what the map GPS coordinates yep. show. Yep. And it ends on at the new surveyed lines right there, basically, that it would have Mr. Foster's land. It would actually work better if it was where it looks like it is. Like I said, it doesn't come through mine. I just think as one of the homeowners that's attached to it, if the town map shows it's 500 feet long, and that's what the town is claiming. Well, then, uh, then most of this is mute, anyways, because it wouldn't enter most of the town property, uh, most of the homeowner, homeowners' lands, anyways. So we're going to go with the length that's registered. Can we get the map for that? Yes. Do you want me to run down yeah. and print a copy yeah, of it? That might be helpful. Maybe you can take around for just a second. Yeah, yeah. which one? a couple on it. So, well, that'd be a good yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So what are you looking for tonight? Is the yeah. the permission to cut across on the town's property at the Druid property? Well, they, can, they can travel class four roads anyways, right? Yeah, class four you guys already Absolutely. Have, yeah, that's granted. My my thing is my part is I just want to know where it is. So I mean if they went inside your house, you want to know from the class four highway to the Jewett property is out of our jurisdiction. You guys got oh, all of those? That's all yes. personal okay. private property. So wherever that class four highway is, it, where it's laid out, which we'll get the map on it, uh, that is, is granted permission already. What are you looking for tonight from us? Is the Jewett property? The yes. Okay. And that little piece of laptop on top of Collins Hill. Yeah, that's what I'm looking that's right, coming where Plot Road and Collins Hill intersects. Yep. To get down to Ghoul, Ghoul, Ghoul Hill. Other than that, we're, you have it so we're legal on Ghoul Hill, but that little section we can't get to it's approximately 500 feet of paved road. I think it's also on the proposal. It shows it on one of the maps. Yep. That I highlighted it. And once you get up on Clay Hill, then you just you go wherever. And as far as going up the entrance of the land, we're talking maybe 200 feet, and then we're behind the other houses. Yep. Yep. Still on the town land, but only for probably another 200 feet, and then we'd be on Mr. Foster's land. Okay. So we're really looking for only 400 foot of an L, which we also have money to maintain. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, any water, gravel. The, the town said we, we, we can get culverts. Um, to some of that sort of stuff. Let's see. He has a length on that? Uh, 0.28 miles. So it's 0.28 miles. 
So it's before the college room, which this is what it's really. So that is where you, what you assumed it was? It's just under a quarter mile on my GPS map. Other than that, I, I couldn't be accurate. They're within 50 yards, I believe. Five thousand six hundred twenty-five. How many miles? How many uh, feet? Come on. Uh, this How many feet? Come on. Yeah, that would be five thousand two hundred eighty. Ten thousand two hundred eighty. Five thousand two hundred eighty. Yeah. So yeah, that would come down. Five thousand seven hundred sixty yards. You should have remembered that. <laughs> My mind is getting flooded. 1,478 feet. 0.4. So I guess are we going with, I know the length, but are we going with what's cut into the woods? I'd have to get out there and see what's cut into the woods and see if how straight it is, whether it looks like. I mean, they, it, it goes in. I'm just, I'm just curious. No. So again, again, if it does, like it, it, well, it's got a, it goes in and it turns towards the hotel. It's got to turn towards the hotel. Yeah. It's got to turn towards it, yeah. turn towards it. otherwise you can get to a part. Way off. So, so now say we did this, would you rather have it go kind of where the road no, goes and it all went through, or would you rather have it sitting closer to your property line? You, 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 you can't because what's right. like my man is Bruce right. Lyons. Yep. You're going to have to. Uh, and then the people that have to, or whoever bought, yeah, we'll have to uh, make uh, some uh, accommodations for both them okay. and fans when it comes to. Yeah, we're not going to be clearing. Yeah, no, part of the thing is Julie has to be warmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
uh, it's going to change the whole dynamics of that, yep. that section of property. And then we'll have to revisit where the uh, access through mm -hmm. massive trails goes through the property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this will be a contingent, um, a kind of a temporary deal until okay. we are, uh, the, the road is put in and things are situated. So we've got to make sure that we just don't give you a blank check. Oh, no. and, and, uh, I mean, we look at this the same as a landowner. Yep. Exactly. It's a year and year from when it becomes inconvenient for you and it doesn't work, hopefully we can come up with a new agreement, something else can work out, or if it's not going to work at all. And again, we're we figuring out a different path. We asked for basically you now 70 inches. Pretty, yeah. Tall as I am. We have trail width limits. We tread lightly. Okay, if we make a mess, we come in, we clean it up. We, we have our own funds for Green Mountain ATV, which is a lot of Lomel County, uh, Vasa, the state park, matches us so we can put lots of funds into it to make it so it doesn't cause any problems for the town, no erosion, no water runoff to anybody else. And, and the rationale? The trails aren't far, we shut them down to the rat park. And this would be really beneficial because it gets you to a gas station. That is our that only that gas for? station besides Eaton. Mm. Um, right now, Morrisville. Morrisville, we're working on Morrisville to get the signal on that end. There's nothing in Waterville, so this is pretty much it in the middle. <laughs> and it's not, not like it's going to be a main corridor trip, it's a dead end trail. It's an amenity trip to get down and get food. Not, not even going to see 200 people a day or ever. ever so. <laughs> Closer to ten or fifty or, or just you're we'll just guessing. It. Ten. I'd hope I'd hope twenty five on a good day because that's bringing in money to the town and the state. And that would I think would be a good day. That would be a very very good day. day. Yeah. And that would be an organized group ride. And, and most of our travel is between Belvedere and Lowell and Belvedere and Eden. Then. So most people stick to the other end, top of Clay Hill, <coughs> going around that way. It's going to be people that need it, that need gas in the middle, that are going to probably be the only ones that really head that way. I'm assuming that way. Bass and people come out of town has that trail down through there because it's a dead end trail with bass. I think it's the same thing. They just use it for fuel. Yeah, yeah. Nat. So yeah, I apologize. I don't recognize you guys. I. Uh, my name's Nat Kinney. What's your name? Shannon Frederick, Pat, President of the Club. Patrick Douglas, Vice President of the Club. Ken Toronto, Trailmaster, and Resident of John. Okay. All right. Thank you. So the the Jewett property when it gets converted, which is Mike was talking about, it's going to be a big enchilada as far as a gorilla. And the, you know, you easily, you know, I'm not saying it happened, but the access to this will be really second fiddle to you know how many employees or, or what we're going to use the state is. We our citizens have put a lot of money into buying it, and we're hoping it will be a, a basis for you know. A substantial basis for economic development here, and uh, you know, so I really would want it understood that, as you're saying, you know, this isn't, you know, this is not future promise, and you're saying it's year by year, just like a land. This is no contract you know. with us. We're yeah, it's being signed for one year each time for the use that you want to use it. And our season goes from May 15th to October seventh, uh, uh, so November 15th. It did well. We'll, we'll be having the same discussions with Bass, too. Yep. You do an awful lot of work trying to keep track of all that and going over those contracts every year. Oh, yeah, it, it is amazing <laughs> the amount of work that you do. And, uh, and I'm speaking for myself, but I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody here. We support you 100%. We Thank you. think what you're doing is good and uh, good management of property and doing a great job. Thank you. We try to get stewards. This year at Green Up Day, we collected. 65 bags. Between Eaton, Johnson, and White Park. And Thank you. All as our group at our own time. All trails are dry, class four roads. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, what's the last pleasure? I just had one more question about the um, paved bit, and excuse my ignorance, but is it safer? Because, I mean, it's not super curvy right there, but people do whip. <laughs> Um, up so and down. Straight shot and it's, by the yeah, 
So is it safer for you guys to go 35 miles an hour versus the 10? Like, I, would, I don't know what's safer for you. 35. I'm not sure exactly mm -hmm. what it is right here. It's probably. So like, saying, I like to stay typically 10 below. Is it 30 yeah. Yeah. So we, we, we can put a 25 sign in there typically. Okay. okay. We can put whatever you'd like in there, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, I don't know enough about. I mean, on state highways, if it's 50, we do 50. Okay. We stay with the state's rating for speed. Or less, whatever, whatever yeah. you're comfortable with. But. Yeah. It's a guide. It's moving closer, whatever you would like. <laughs> but it is more, you know, if you've got people going 10 and it's a 35, you, to me, you become an obstacle at that point. You don't yeah. care. Right. That's why I was just, yeah, that makes sense in my mind. Um, 25. 25 sounds reasonable if that's what you feel is. That's our typical. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And solar to main owners. No, that's work. Right, absolutely. So I would look for a motion, probably capturing the 25 speed limit on the paved section, as well as the question on the Jewett property. Okay, I move that we approve for VASA to have access to the town owned parcel, formerly known as the Jewett property, as well as. Um, uh the right to drive the uh paved part between plot road and gold hill at 25 miles an hour that sound okay mr chairman don't give me Second yes. motion there's a second do we have any more discussion and you already have permission to drive on gold hill that was on dirt, dirt road you already have the right but, to travel on dirt road you can't Bring a trailer. Gotcha. Nope, I got it. So on 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 drag lot, are we left up to powers and our landowners' interpretation of the road, or is there a uh, easy without hiring a surveyor way to figure out exactly where that road is? I don't think we know until you do it really well, and whether or not you do it really well, or we do it really well. I mean, I don't think I would not vote on that. You know, here's the road, and because you know, right? You guys can't call. <laughs> yeah. Not knowing exactly either. Well, we'll have to. Uh, so if we could come to agreement with landowners, and let's just forget about the drag lot road and not go deeper onto your prop their property. If we could make that with them, we could just forget to talk about the drag lot road and continue. Okay. Right. I mean, we'll work with everybody definitely. And if it was understood on Jewett property that they were going to be going off from oh, the established yeah. method. Yes, it's that a, L. It takes it to get it from us and be happy to get it. Any, <laughs> any more discussion? This this motion's for for a one year grant grant yeah. of access. And you have a contract yeah. or something? Yes, you we do. Us? Okay, good. Yeah. I, I attended a meeting at Johnson State College where the statewide a couple of years ago the statewide rep for NASA wanted to have less access to our our roads that's Danny Hale yeah and we it, do absolutely I mean we use access for roads we in this county we use access for roads because it's what's there we absolutely don't want to be on roads any more than we have to you know finding landowners is is a tough tough road finding places to go there's several very large landowners, logging companies that unfortunately don't come from anywhere around here that own huge tracts of land, and it's almost impossible to get a hold of them. Hmm. I mean, if I could find a, a landowner that had property, some of the logging property around here, and we get access, that would keep us off a lot of roads. Because we don't like to ride roads anymore than you know, anybody else wants to see us. His point was that uh, feeling a responsibility for maintenance, uh, he wanted to lessen, it seemed, or as I interpreted it, that he wanted to reduce the number of roads that they had a maintenance obligation on, and therefore by reducing the travel. I thought, you know, seeing as how uh, people were, you know, the way to get a good attendance is to try cut down. ATV access, you know, do we really want to go there? I'd be curious what you folks think, local, think about that. And that, that'd be a subject for another meeting. But, you know, 
I've had that on my agenda for a long time. How do yeah. we tippy toe into this, and then what what do the local people want? Because the state people clearly express an interest in our reducing the number of class three or. I don't think they were talking to four because I think four provides you with access. Correct. But, but they turned uh, right open, open mile of blacktop this year for us. Well, they have. Uh, I, I know exactly where you're coming yeah. from, and I, I understand. Many of our, well, our fourth class roads tend sometimes to be hydrologically connected and dugways, so they are uh, highly uh, erodible. Uh, and as you're running into uh, the uh, Planning Commission, we've tasked them with looking at our fourth class roads because we're going to have an obligation perhaps to maintain them uh, with no compensation for them. And we've got development on them, we've got people building in the right of way. And we're, you know, it's time to get a handle. Actually, I've got to get some paper. We're going to talk to here a couple times about repairing some of your class four roads. Yeah, uh, we, we use Cotting, we use Sinclair. And both of them need repair, and we are willing to do it. Unfortunately, I just haven't got the. I should be hearing on Sinclair any time now. We filed for the permit. We filed for the for the last week. A cost of eight dollars filed for So all this type of thing will enter into what our planning commission is thinking about. You know? Absolutely. I mean, so does that mean they're going to waive that $88 fee eventually, maybe? <laughs> well, we don't waive money, do we? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's $88 fee. This is policy. <laughs> I missed the okay. Daniel and his prime rib dinner this year. Well, you know, and, and I, you know, and I, and I uh, am not going to miss it next year. <laughs> okay, back to the board. Any more discussion? If not, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your thank you. long segment here. <laughs> yeah. To drag on, but we appreciate it. Yep. So if you need the contact information for the new owners of Joe Padula's land, I have that if you need it. That would be super, I think. And yeah. It'd be easy to put it all together. Get somebody's email and I can send you know it to you. The Bob Joe Padula's? Yeah. No. I own the field right next, the open field part of that oh. property, but somebody else owns on all the other sides. So, all right. So if we come down through and get your get the information yeah. from you. Yeah, sure. Can swing down this yeah, way. I can get it to Brian, and he can get it to you or whatever. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. What were you saying? This your first time here. What's up? I had a very enjoyable time. <laughs> Come back again. Uh, we're we're back again. Back. I don't know. Is this easy? Come, Come back, back, back again. It won't be so easy. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen any TV trails all over the state. Uh, uh, just like New Hampshire. You know? Yep. Yeah. 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 Money is rolling in over oh, there. The problem is, is getting landowners to understand that they have no liability when they sign this paper. Just like when, when no you guys sign go after them for no reason and fast carries insurance to do. Do you want that sign right now? Sure. I haven't filled anything <laughs> out yet. <laughs> Probably wanted to that. Let me see what you got. Let me take a picture of someone with black eyes. You can sign up and let's put it on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just sign it and fill the blanks in. It'll be fair. Do you want to start with Howard? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Or Howard. Hi. What do you got? I got a last potential last bid bid for the property. I got a last, a potential last, I got a member for the last opening on the TNL. And uh, and I, I think it's delightful. It's uh, uh, Jay Stanton has um, has has uh, agreed to sit on the committee, which is wonderful. I mean, if I get my brothers, I want to stand to be on every committee from now until the council. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, he's he's agreed, and uh, and the the rest of the committee seems to think it's a pretty good idea. So we need to have you guys. How many did this count in? Oh, good. This so counts in, son. Okay. So it's about daughter now, son. Okay. Right. How many people will this put? Seven. Seven? Okay. Because you and did then, lose Ian, right? We lost Ann. But you haven't lost anyone else. Did no. we accept her re resignation? Do we have a resignation? Well, I, I, we I, I, have it. She did deliver a resignation. Oh, she did? Yes. No, we never saw it. Okay. So maybe uh, to formalize that, 
look for a motion to accept Ian's resignation and appoint Jay, Jay, Stanton. Jay Stanton for the uh, Tuesday night live. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion second. Any more discussion? All in favor, sing by saying aye. 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 That all you got? Uh, yeah, other than the fact that I just wanted to say that the committee's, it's a great committee and we're working. Good. It's, it's doing really well. We've got four or five bands now laid out uh, on the contract. Um, we've got the uh, audio gear you know, on order. Uh, yeah, the, the vendors are starting to come in. So yeah. now we're going to be fine. It's going to be a good, good. Summer. Yeah. good summer. Thank you guys for your work. Yeah. Nobody, uh, it's fun. It's, a, it's, a, it's really nice working with you. Know, yeah. Yeah. I've been sitting in on those meetings and they've been super productive and everyone's good. doing a great good. job. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, next time. You emailed me about a couple things for. Uh, other than the appointment. Oh. Um, I did. Let's see. No, I don't remember. What did I say? Kyle had a couple other Tuesday Night Live. Um, TNL. Oh, um, so some things that, oh, yeah. So one of the big things they're trying to figure out is um, trash recycling and compost collection at Tuesday Night Live. So the former committee, they um, had hiked up the uh, vendor fee from $100 to $175 so it would incorporate the trash. This committee felt that that was a good idea, keep the vendor fee higher, um, and uh, be, you know, have um, two vessels for, so they had Ellie Ventura from, uh, thank you, okay. yeah. Yeah, so she um, recommended having one or only two places to collect garbage and recycling um, as opposed to having many dotted around because people tend to, in their research, use vessels more if they're in just one or two locations as opposed to many. That's interesting. So, also, also, they need to be manned. Oh. Right, and they need to be manned. That was the big part. So it's easier to control when it's just one or two. Now, the question is where to store this trash until the town can pick it up. Which would hopefully be the following morning. Right, so the recommendation is could we build a box, open? basically. Well, don't start open until Friday, right? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Going, it would go, the stuff would go in the dumpster behind the, behind the temp rod, probably. Okay, okay. Well, right. And there's a recycling, there's a recycling dumpster back there, too. Okay. So it would be easy to do. Okay. And those dumpsters are never full. So. Okay. Right, so to store it for that night or a couple of nights, um, this committee thought that building a wooden box to just store the garbage and recycling in for the night or two uh, near the bandstand, kind of Part behind. Of it, yeah, mm -hmm. either there or over by the back, or yeah, right behind the bandstand or something like that, somewhere on the property that is up Right, like right. And then Jen Burton requested while we're building a box potentially, could we build a little extra cubby to store um, community oven stuff like um some the of the uh, yeah because right now jasmine's kind of storing it on her porch and you know it's kind of getting moved around so so that was one request um another one was potentially to start a gofundme um so yeah. does the board think they want something formally presented on what you're looking at for building or I'd be happy to throw something up if you'd like, but I, what, I, what we're envisioning is a, probably a box that's four feet high by four feet square or something like that with a lid. Okay, a for the garbage stuff. stuff. Yeah. And then what about the storage stuff? Oh, that's, that's nothing. I mean, that's, it's, okay. Know, it's a panel for pizza and a couple of rakes. Okay. And maybe a couple of pieces of firewood. You know, no problem with the community oven this year. No, they're getting uh, a, a small groups getting together in um, next week and invited me to come to that meeting <laughs> to just because they're trying to come up with a good plan of managing it and mm. really making it. Community. Well, what are seven days, Kai, in the local activists? 
<laughs> Does she have employed otherwise? <laughs> so I guess the board needs to authorize Howard yeah. the Tuesday Night Live committee of building a storage bin for their trash and stuff. So move. Um, I do want to circle around about that. I guess we could move in second and get to discussion. Move in a second? Just second. If you okay. Motion. Um, right now, the garbage that's out there, the village is picking up for us. Uh, so we would either have to, and if the town's going to do it, uh, we'd be adding more to our town employees. Or if we're doing it with the village, we're going to have to coordinate with the village about any kind of expert collection or early collection or whatever we're asking them to do. Here's the situation. We on the committee are going to have that field at the end of the night, or certainly by the following morning. There it has to be trash. So anything that needs to be picked up is going to be in a box. Yeah. And so it's a one-stop shop for whoever comes by again. And of course, it doesn't matter to us to who that is. But well, it's up to you guys. I wonder about renting a dumpster for the two months. I mean, we need two. Yeah, you need recycling and you need trash. Well, I'm, that would work too. That saves me a little trouble. Mm -hmm. you, might want, point. you might want a small enough box so it doesn't tempt local people to supply it. <laughs> well, we could lock it. I mean, supply? You mean, you mean take stuff out? <laughs> Let's add to it. <laughs> no. But I would think that would happen a lot easier than coordinating. I mean, moving garbage from here to there, and then from there to there, and yeah. then from there to there. Just put. <clears throat> It's two months. How much is a dumpster going to cost? Well, it's kind of like eight months kind of month. expensive, 100, actually. But uh, 160 dollars. It's 160 a month uh, for two dumpsters. Okay. Well, you could buy a pretty secure box for that, but then you'd have to be moving. moving right, well, yeah, I would just yeah. get the dumpsters for this year. You guys log it up and have a key on it. Yes, yeah. you guys have other things to worry about. Yeah. That works for me. I would we can do a couple of two yard dumpsters behind the behind the uh, behind the Bandstand. Yeah. You're, you're so out of there. We want to withdraw your motion in a second? Yeah. Mm, okay. What ab sorry, what about the cubby space for the uh, yeah, oven yeah. stuff? We could probably work, work something out in the in the, uh, in the bandstand lockup. Oh, yeah. Maybe there's room there. Okay, yeah. Because without, without all the signage in there, right. there's not much going to go on in there. We're not going to store the speakers and the heavy, and, and, you know, the expensive amplifiers and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take a motion. We get a couple of downstairs for Thursday night live this year. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any more discussion? From the from which budget celebrations, events, and yeah. Well, for the two months though, we're not talking about the Tuesday night live thing going through the year with eighty bucks or seven hundred sixty bucks a month. Oh, of course. Yeah. <coughs> we're getting an extra how many dollars? From each vendor, 70? 75. Oh, yeah. So it, <coughs> cover that it does cover that. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and vote on this, but there's one other thing I want to bring up. Any other discussion? You want to call for a vote too? Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Well, well, in favor, <laughs> signify so saying aye. Aye. No opposed. You've been gone for over three years. I don't know. I, just, I can't leave. My guy just can't leave. <laughs> All right, and the other thing I want to point out is that uh, Kyle did mention is that we are shooting for zero waste. Yes. And all our information and our speeches are from the podium and advertisements and all like that are going to stress bring your own dishes, take them home. Cool. And we'll see how it goes. And this year there is a, also, in keeping with the former committee, um, banning styrofoam right. this year because right. uh ellie was saying that the majority the bulk of the waste was the styrofoam mm -hmm. the right. so, so yeah. I, you know sounds good we're in good shape good if you um, had six weeks before the first performance i'd be a happy guy yeah right. <laughs> so the other thing they've been talking about is starting um a gofundme uh campaign with the goal of um 
raising five thousand dollars towards equipment um feeling like now it's you know it's a new committee there's been some buzz about it this might be a good time to to raise some money towards equipment because that stuff is so expensive it'd be nice to get and, that out of the way yeah. yep so that was another thing i wanted to bring up but you don't need that equipment to get going this year, but it would be nice to supplement. There's one piece that they do, and <clears throat> Tim from MVO has found MVU has found a really good deal on a console for a mixing board. Right, yeah, um, for about half of what they normally go for. So he's done great research on that. Sure and and uh, this committee is um, contingent on this board authorizing um, to spend that money. It was twenty four hundred dollars. Like yeah. Rosemary, did you get a request on that today or yesterday or the last Not day, the day. Last day? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, oh yeah, approved spending twenty four hundred dollars in a new sound console and snakehead. Right. I had that in my notes. Right. So, what's board's feelings on uh, allowing a town entity to start a gold fund? Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah. We should have no objection. Okay. And until we have a hundred of them. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> until we have a hundred of them. Until we have a hundred of them. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, I don't know if this fits into the to the 24, 2,500 for the for the Constant. year, but we need your. I think we need your approval for that expenditure too. Right. Why would you not do a capital fund campaign similar to the way the historical society traditional? Uh, well, this is just a different way of going about it, I think. I mean, the GoFundMe thing, is that, is that what you mean? Yeah, you know, why wouldn't you do it similar to a... Well, because this is a lot less labor for us yeah. to... I mean, as it is, we're building the system from scratch again. And to then go knocking on the doors to try and find another five grand from okay. the woman. I guess the only thing that was concerned with GoFundMe's is they keep eight percent of it. Okay. So if you donate a hundred bucks, they keep eight percent. Well, they do. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you go to what's the other one? PayPal. Pay no. Um, Kickstarter. Kickstarter. If you don't make your five thousand, you don't get anything, and all the money gets returned to the to the donors. With with um, with this one. You you get you know if if you get to the end of your uh, your uh, your time period you get whatever's in there so it's worth doing it that way um, it's it's the general feeling out there on the web that it's better it's a better system than it. yeah it costs a little more in terms of eight percent but PayPal is three percent PayPal has a GoFundMe you can use a PayPal account and people could pay with PayPal. Well, they can pay with PayPal in any case. Okay. Right, but you just have a specific email address for that particular thing that you're raising yeah. money for. And Don't you have to advertise it yourself and all that stuff? One of the nice things about these right. uh, about That's true. fundraisers it's so easy. is that it's a lot easier for volunteers like us to yeah. actually make it happen because they've got this whole system set up to treat people. Okay. Yeah. I like seeing you and Casey there raising money. You know, it's a chance to visit with you. We are really tired. Casey just started working on another god damn part <laughs> grant today. This is the last time I'm going to see her for weeks. <laughs> you have an objection to the GoFundMe page yet? Yeah. Um, I, I would tend to vote it out of the town money, you know, and, and try to raise it later. You know, well, we've we've got forty two hundred bucks or something like that in the account now. Yeah, <clears throat> that's about what we need for. Paying the bands. Uh, if we if we got not another dollar, we can pay for the entertainment. This summer. But we haven't even started to see really the income come in from the vendors and sponsors. the uh, and, sponsors. And sponsors. So we're in really good shape in that regard. And it could well be that we'll we'll you know it, it'll it'll just be really smooth. But we're spending twenty four hundred dollars like right off the bat. We have to we have to watch our dollars. 
Didn't yeah. the town report say we had 64 under on hand? Something like that. That's the end of 2018. Yeah, okay, the end of it. All right. But like Doug said, we uh, took it out of the kitty, it would probably settle up at the end, wouldn't it? Well, it might if we, if, if we advanced it. I, I, I like to think that that's going to work, but but we would get would generate, I think, by doing a campaign like this, an online campaign, yeah. we would generate more interest in TNN. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, part of it, I think, is just to, again, bring the community together, Yeah. support a community event. Oh, yeah, we'll beat the hell out of these people from the bandstand. Yeah. And you'll be passing the bucket. No, we won't. No? No. No, that, no, that, was, more. that was taking away. You, uh, one of us was on the bill. Well, I don't remember that, but I mean, this is for Tuesday Night Live, passing the bucket for Tuesday Night Live, I thought was a No, no, we, we, it was decided, right, Eric, it was decided that there will be no, no yeah. more bucket. We'd be in no, okay, well, we could have a bucket there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, the no, committee's no. decision on this in terms of, we need to do it. Go ahead and do it, Pedro. Thank you. All right. Do you need any formal action from us? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if you're not going to get in our way when we go for a bucket, I mean, not for a, for a go for a <laughs> You see how much he does I had no objection to it. Was there a motion and second on the table? No. 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 All right. So, uh, thank you. Sorry, one more thing. Was capping the committee at seven people feeling like yeah. Nine, it's right? hmm? not necessary. No, Seven no, I, I just thought feels it really good. It's yeah, solid. We started out with the, the committee. When, when we set up the committee, when you guys set up the committee, it was for nine. Mm -hmm. You're feeling a lot more comfortable at seven. I could see why. And, yeah, and if you've got a problem with that, you should let me know otherwise you're going to go at seven. Could we so limit it to seven? I would advise you so to do. Yeah. So it's at seven It's at seven So we just won't reappoint anyone else. Okay. Bingo. All right. Anything else? Be up there. MCs this year will be Greg Stefanski and Isaac Eddy. They're going to co. Okay. You guys know Isaac Eddy? Blue Man Group. Damn. <laughs> 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 uh, All right. I think that was it. Okay. Uh, thanks. 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 You got that? Yep. <laughs> so, I want to make sure I oh. missed something. Oh. It was the GoFundMe thing and the $2,400. You guys didn't, didn't do anything. Did, just didn't do anything. Just we acknowledge that they're going to do it. We yeah. acknowledge that they're going to do it. That's all we care about. Trust me. Okay. And I said I'd want to get something, something else, or should I talk to you? We took away no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> Basically, what we talked about. Yeah. Basically, what we talked about. The access from Druitt property, that's the lot number. On okay. Here. From now till November 15th, we'll re readdress it next year, see how things go. Uh, section of town property connect to Tom Foster's property. Or figure it's your correct address. Yeah. Do we do you sign for the town? Yeah, I would look for a motion to authorize you to sign. sign. And also, we want to sign Second it. 25 miles an hour on Clay Hill, Hill. paved section. Uh, not Clay Hill. Uh, Gould Hill. No, Clay, Clay Hill. Hill. Oh, it was Clay Hill? Between Gould and Gould. Gould isn't paved or any other oh, section right. there on. Mr. Chairman, you have a motion on the floor. Now. Yep, I heard motion second. Authorizing the chair to sign. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Yeah, it would be nice if you all went out and bought some wheelers and come joined us. <laughs> we, we, we really have a great time. I believe it. I have a wheeler, but I'm too cheap to register. <laughs> <laughs> You're my neighbor. <laughs> Only during hunting. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Well, thank you all. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Yep. Good meeting. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Do we get a copy? Hey. <laughs> We're supposed to get a copy. Just give it Brian. It'll be fine. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. compensation adjustment. Who's this for? Uh, Jason has completed the level two road scholar training. We've received a certification. Okay. Um, so he is ready for the uh, 75 cent per hour bump. 75 cents? Yeah. And when's it effective? Uh, that would have been a good. As we've already adopted that new pay scale grid, do we have to formally take action or would it just. Not we wouldn't work? have to. Um, it would be kind of, I think it would be a matter of policy that we could. This is the first time somebody's advancing horizontally okay on the pay scale where they're moving from one category to another we haven't had an issue like this in the past and i don't believe we addressed how we wanted to handle it when we adopted the scale how would you handle if they moved um vertically with senior Vin v uh, vertically is uh alongside their annual increase but if they also gain seniority, they got the bump of going over five years or something. It would be handled annually with their with their increase. And we wouldn't take a separate motion? No. So does the board feel that we need to take separate action for someone who moves horizontal? No. We could just move this from an action item to an informational item. Yep. And yep. Uh, I can just yep. inform the board when it happens. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, neither of us do that. Yep. All right, but tell them congratulations. Okay. Discussion of recent joint meeting and future joint meeting. That was a disaster. It definitely, uh, we were crunched for time and the boards were not coming to the same place in the time we had. We can never have a limited uh, time frame like we had before. We have to have a dedicated meeting for a specific discussion uh, with no time restriction whatsoever. And a moderator. That's all I got to say on that. Yeah, and the moderator would keep us also on time, you know, so that things stay focused and moving in the right direction. Agreed. Has some of that discussion been passed? No, no, it probably hasn't because we're just telling it now. But because uh, I heard this before that you know, the, some members would like to have a moderator for future meetings. I've talked about having a moderator with the village when we're trying to coordinate the June 3rd meeting okay um and does that correspond with anybody else's meetings is that just ours just ours so we could make that our work session meeting that's the idea is that this would replace our work session meeting okay. uh the village has also asked that we meet at six uh, so if we met with them at six we and we wanted to we might be able to finish that at a reasonable hour and do something else that evening or we could just assume that this is going to take a enough time that we don't want to do anything else but but to their point and you know some of the members maybe we wouldn't have anything even planned for the rest of the night it would be a dedicated meeting to just the trustees joint board that's what i'd like to see because i think there's enough things for us to to discuss this whole consultant thing is going to obviously take some more discussion Yep. This beautification. Yeah. Um, it was 
whole, the whole joint employee thing or shared employees. Yeah. There's some big topics. To yeah. It also says on the agenda in future meetings. So yeah, uh, th this is mostly germane to the to the discussion with the merger consultants, but I I think that because we have a mutual shared interest in this, and it's pretty close to 50-50, I think when the vote is taken, it should be a cumulative vote of both boards together. So you could have one board, let's say they want three, there's three votes for one contractor, okay, and their board passes, okay, then another board might have a, a different mix. Let's put it this way. Let, let's say one board has five that they want, and that they vote in the affirmative for one contractor, five. And then the other board, they may be one or two people vote for it. But the whole thing gets shot down because both sides do not have a majority. I would like to see it uh, put everybody together for that particular vote. And so if there's 10 people voting and there's six people vote for the same contractor, that it passes that the town and the village would go with that particular contractor. I hear what you're saying, but I don't think legally you can do that because when we meet jointly, we are not meeting as one board. We are meeting as two separate boards jointly. And that's well, it. I understand that, but on most issues, you, you could argue that. But on this one, the, the town and the village have a mutual interest in to try to find somebody, a contractor, to give us a merger study. And so I think that it should be combined. The vote should be combined for that issue. Wouldn't be a binding vote. The thing is, we're not really 50-50 because we're talking about totally different money amounts, aren't we? I mean, potentially. Potentially, because we're not held to any dollar amount. But I don't think the select board is interested in paying thirty-two thousand dollars, and I don't think we're uh, interested no. in ponying up the other twenty-eight if the village is only going to pay four. It, it isn't the money; it, it's it's the jurisdictional thing. I mean, I understand where Mike is coming from. You know, it would help resolve things quicker, and and why not? And you know, we're we're all concerned with the overall well-being of these these entities. You know, but jurisdictionally. You know, it, it, I don't think it would uh, pass muster. I don't think the person would have a binding contract with us. Mm. That, that's just, you know, that, that's, that's just my thought as a... Somebody else? Yeah. I, uh, that's the same concern I have. Is I understand where you're coming from, but as we are not a legal one board, I don't think we can vote like that. I just think it'd be a little easier to get something. Yeah. Yeah. The moderator can help, I, I believe, because the moderator, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be a hung jury and we're going to have to decide. Yeah. Right. And yeah, Dave Williams, you know. And uh, the disadvantage of, or the advantage of a, of a moderator is that uh, Eric, it's is the same thing that addresses the problem. Eric is our chair, and Gordy is their chair, and they none of them can reach across and say, "Hey, you shut up! We're going to hear it." Whereas a moderator has that authority. Yeah. Well, we've always had moderators until this meeting, I think, or maybe mm -hmm. the last two, but that was always the. Well, I thought we rarely had them, and, that, and then we had some. You know, yeah. if you go back in history, I don't well, think you have. well, okay, since well, I've been on the board. Okay. Yeah. For the last couple of years, we we have had moderators, and I I think they've worked out better with a moderator. Me too. Yeah. It also educates the moderator in what's happening. Mm -hmm. But I think sort of a. Uh, 
the worst case scenario of everything that came together is uh, we set up there with joint meeting. The village was having a public hearing, so they had a hard stop when the joint meeting had to s stop. Uh, last minute, they came in with this vicious dog. We had to have a meeting within seven days, so we piled that on at the beginning. Again, that we had a hard stop because we had the joint meeting coming up. We were also a little late getting started because uh, Sharon wasn't here. And, you know, so it just everything piled up on it, and it it was certainly a time crunch and pushing things along. Typically, it doesn't happen that poorly, I don't think. So, Kyle brought up a point that I thought was really important um, about what the uh, one of the parties of the dog here and had a complaint that she had been uh, threatened physically. And I was disappointed in myself and how I responded to that. And I think as a whole, Kyle was really right um, that the board, just generally, you know, obviously we need to remain neutral in dog hearings. But when somebody at one of our meetings or in our building says that they have been threatened or they're not feeling safe, I think that's the time to really stop and make sure that everybody is uh, safe, that the situation is addressed, um, because this needs to be a place where people can come without without feeling threatened. And I, I don't want to address the veracity of whether she was or wasn't threatened, I'm just saying in general, moving forward, when that sort of thing happens, I think that needs to be a, that needs to be a, something that clicks in for us to say, stop, let's address this. Did you talk about that during the deliberations at all? No, we didn't. There was something mentioned about having a, a sheriff here next dog here. And I and I wouldn't go that far. I mean, it, and I, I hear where everybody's coming from. But typically, if there's a sense before a meeting that it could get very, very contentious, and we see that build up, then we do get the sheriff on call, at least in the area. Um, we didn't sense, neither Brian nor I sensed that we had that situation here. But we did have a constable, and and they have a statutory responsibility for, uh, in public meetings, of keeping the order. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think what we can ask our constable, when they're here, they would be here for a dog hearing, any dog hearing, or even health issues is that they should hang back and make sure all the parties leave the property before they leave and just that everything is is no con uh, confrontations down in the parking lot type of thing and that really that's really their job more than ours is to keep that order okay. but i think we need to talk to sharon and tracy about yeah, doing that. that definitely wasn't happening and and maybe we can you know yeah we should talk to her i think and also um maybe let the, uh, like you know how would it dare know that you know like there wasn't any communication about she came to you because you had just been running the meeting it just made sense um that you would have been sort of the authority in that moment <laughs> but i can't be i mean we can't be that's that's not our role yeah I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but it's not our role. It's, it would be Sharon's role or Tracy's role to do that. Well, it's, it's absolutely within our role to say, I hear that somebody, you're saying that someone has been threatened. Let's, let's go sit over there and have Brian address this situation. We're going to remain neutral in the situation, but we want to make sure that everybody on the premises is safe. That's definitely within our role. Who's, who's hour in this because there were 11 or 12 people sitting here you know with, and and many people jumped up you know you know she was right here talking to eric uh because and, and uh I, I talked to my position is a little bit different than yours or kyle i think that that it, that as many people responsibly jumped up and took care of it uh as as could you expect you know i watched two or three people, you know, 
I immediately said, this is something for the sheriff, you know, and people, and we need a bodyguard, and there were people really going being bodyguards, you know. So part of it is, I think, related to her reaction, how she addressed it to Eric. Eric is in control of running a meeting. He's got some other things. He's not, uh, um, and, and it may seem harsh from that, that he wasn't as responsive to her, her plea but many other people were jumping. So um, I, I don't think it falls directly on him to, to do this. I'm not, I'm not looking to, re, to relitigate or litigate that particular evening and go back and say, what well, you know, blow, blow by blow what happened. And in the future, we all just need to take it upon ourselves to, to make sure that people here are safe. We can't give the impression that it's nothing to us. Yeah because it is something to us. I watched so. how many people went out the door with her, you know, yeah, when, I, to when she came back. You know, there was no, no apprehension that this, I didn't have an apprehension that this was going to happen. So, um, you know, we don't have people downstairs. Uh, are you saying we should have somebody escort these well, people out? I, oh, it sounds like you didn't think that there was going to be tension. I no. did notice the tension building up in the room. At the hearing. At the hearing, for sure. I mean, leading up to it, we didn't. Right. And I also it. saw Adair hang back because she was trying to let people go out. I was noticing all this body language. I noticed when the other one came in, she looked like she wanted to do something to her. I mean, I did notice all of this. Um, so I feel like it wasn't, you know, I'm not surprised that there was an altercation <laughs> downstairs. Um, I guess. I guess what I'm getting at is we have constables. That is their role. Okay, but okay. They sh we should share this with them that we, we have an expectation after a meeting, a hearing like that, they would hang back and make sure everyone leaves safely. Okay. And I guess I'm wondering if maybe, Eric, in the, just a learning moment for all of us that I, that's kind of new news to me. <laughs> I, I didn't really know that that was Sharon's uh, well, role. I don't think so, we've really communicated that okay. expectation to her. I think it's, No, but I'm just saying this is new news to me that that's her role in in this. By state statute. Okay. It is. Yeah. Okay. I know. I mean, they have certain powers and responsibilities okay. that in statute. I'm just saying the general public doesn't know that in that moment. So that's why she came to you and and for you to say, oh, that's that's the sheriff and literally do a motion like this felt very um, like just dismissive. This is, this, yeah, it's very dismissive. Absolutely. It was literally correct. OK. Uh, um, OK. Eric could not intervene and so as if. But you, can, as, but as you as can communicate what the, you, but you can communicate, you can say, I don't know. I think there's a way to communicate that without being dismissive. Be clear on what people's roles are. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think. Yeah. I understand where you come from. I think the answer is the constables. That's their role, um, and they may not be fully appreciative to their constable role versus their dog uh, ordinance control officer, but uh, that is a, they are appointed as constables and that they have statutory powers and responsibility. Okay. That's, yeah. It's just part of the whole night. It was just a bad night all the way around. Yeah. You know, it started yeah. out bad and it ended bad, uh, but we're going to do better from now on. As far as the constable, I think the constable, uh, if I was there, I'd much rather have a, a sheriff you know, deputy here, then the constable. I, I think that, you know, the dealing with people who are, you know, crossing lines is, is more, you know, in, in law enforcement is more sheriff stuff, you know. So um, what, I, what I see you, what I see the focus is that, is that when she came here, that Eric didn't say, didn't deal with her in, other than kind of an abrupt fashion, okay? He was true to what, to what his, his role was. He couldn't do a sheriff's arrest. What, you know, it's only if he, he could have counseled her. You know, that's essentially what I see you're looking for. 
letting her down easily, directing her. A whole bunch of other people took that took that responsibility. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Be yeah. As far as a constable goes, a hundred years ago, a constable was something. Okay. Today, people don't even think of a constable, and, and they just kind of basically scoff at the word. But they do get the attention of the sheriff. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that our constable should have, you know, uh, taken somebody down or anything like that. What I'm saying is making sure everybody leaves safely. Right. And if if things are happening downstairs like that, then the constable can call the sheriff just as quickly as any of us. True, but we know that years ago a constable was like a sheriff oh, yeah. for the community. I, I, right before they were police officers, so. Um, we don't have to get the police. I like the idea of the constable intervening because the questions get asked, even though I said it's, it's, it's like law enforcement light. It, it's, it, when the constable was there, the question could have been placed to the constable. She could have directed. She could have and dealt with that. And should have probably emotional. gone down and gotten her. I mean, she was already in the parking lot chit-chatting with the other group in a very friendly fashion. Tracy or yeah, Sharon? Sharon, yeah. So, I mean, what were we going to do? Just send Adair back down to the parking lot where she was just threatened? I mean, just the whole the whole scenario just well, like didn't said, make any we sense. We never had this discussion with Sharon or Tracy in an expectation for them. And I think that's the discussion we have to have. It seems to me that this could go into either of the antagonists here, you know, could be the one complaining about who threatened or, you know, that it isn't necessarily well, one the person came order. to us and said she was feeling threatened, so yeah, that's but, the one that we have to address. What no? I'm saying is it, it could be the, uh, in, instead of the person making the complaint, it could be the dog owner who says that I'm being threatened, you know, mm -hmm. you, you don't know how the antagonism is going to go. Sure. And we don't. And we don't, no. but in this case, because we did. High emotion, well, yeah. Well, this, in this case, we know what occurred. Okay. <laughs> it's just, it, it, it can get bogged down in a lot of yeah. the theory and the hocus pocus of the, of the bureaucratic system. It's, okay. it's when somebody's standing in front of us that's saying they feel like saying, yeah. we need to mm -hmm. stand up. And whether you're saying that you felt that, that people did stand up and take care of it, that's fine. I'm, I'm not going to argue with that. I'm just saying. Next time somebody comes and sits in front of here and says that they're not feeling safe, I, I think uh, the reaction from the board should be different. So, well, we, uh, I do want to clarify a couple of things. I, I don't want to bog this down too much, but um, about the incident in particular, uh, Sharon was helpful in a sense uh, because she did help us clear the building of one of the parties. Uh, she could have had a better response and had a better understanding of what was happening at the time, but she was helpful at getting one of the, the when the two parties had a conflict of finishing up with the one party and getting them outside the door into the parking lot and then into their car and, and leaving. Uh, she didn't do it with maybe as much urgency, uh, but the result was pretty helpful to us that we didn't have that instantaneous conflict of having them together last any longer than it, it did. Um, and then I, I actually dismissed Sharon after that because I, I, I felt with what Adair needed, uh, you know, that Sharon didn't have a great read on the situation uh, when it first occurred. I felt more comfortable taking charge of that than mm -hmm. leaving it with her. So I, I stayed with Adair, and that was not really a discussion that I had with Sharon or that she was unwilling or, or anything else. I, I just went ahead and after she had cleared the parking lot, told her to go on home. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, we, all of us could have done a little bit better that night. But I just want to be clear that, you know, I think Sharon was, did what she could and was helpful. Um, but yeah, I think that 
working with them, like having the procedures of, you know, maybe verbally encouraging one of the parties to wait a few minutes. I mean, like you said, Adair waited a little bit. Maybe we could have been a little bit more encouraging about wait, or we might ask Sharon to come back and let us know when mm -hmm. one party's left so that we can avoid having that confrontation in the parking lot or someplace. You know, in the stairwell's bad enough, but we at least have some control over it. But if it happens out in our parking lot, nobody up here might not even realize that something had happened. Uh, I mean, this is not a frequent occurrence. I don't, I don't ever remember having a dog hearing that two parties. And yet when we've had issues in the past, uh, it's always been something that we were aware of in advance. Yes. This, is, this was, both parties were highly cooperative, engaged with us, and until the meeting, and you're right, Kyle, like the, the body language during the meeting was pretty different. Yeah. But leading up to it, uh, nobody had picked up on it in advance. Uh, it was uh, the information provided before the hearing gave the impression they were friends. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We thought they were on decent terms with each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think. But it, I think it was a bad read on the situation. Too, yeah. Is that. You know, when we're talking about, you may feel friendly, but then when you get, when you're actually talking about and getting into the weeds of the details, you start to have a reaction. You know, you start to get. Uh, I suspect. Anxious. I suspect that um, that we maybe should tell people when they're here. You know, this is uh, a feeling of people aren't safe here. This could happen almost anywhere. We maybe should address people like this is a you know this is our judicial process. Besides this, there are other there are other things and threats and and back and forth between the two of you could be dealt with or could be matters between the sheriff's department, and we'd expect you to understand that and act accordingly. You know because you know, this just was here. You know it, it was you know it feels real personal because that person was standing right there, saying do this. Help me. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should uh, tell them that uh, you know this anger can carry over, and, and we might want to just uh, have some boilerplate language that uh, you know there may be animosity, and, and animosity with conduct can it can be a matter for the sheriff. Any other thoughts? If not. Move on to landscaping. Do you all? Those need to be signed, right? We got a majority. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So you've got a packet that didn't staple, but a few pages here. Uh, that's Andrea Blaisdell's proposal for the uh, village green. So I'm bringing this before you uh, because the beautification committee has been interested in uh, making a donation to help this project be realized. Um, so this touches on uh, topics that we're going to cover in our joint meeting, but I do want it to uh, at the very least, bring you a little more up to speed on where we're at with our beautification budget for this year and what we're looking at for kind of some of the funds that might go quickly next year. Um, so this project can likely be paid all, uh, part or in full out of this year's beautification budget, and there is enough money in the fund to pay for beautification's uh, targeted share, but we do have estimates back. Uh, ranging between uh, $1,500 and $1,900. Same, same place as one's a little better than the other. Uh, really, the other one has a berm installed uh, that may help protect the uh, 
planting from some of the snow and, and so on. Uh, the concern is going to be the exact placement is going to have to work with the village snowplow. Uh, so that's still up for review. Yeah, uh, but the construction of that berm adds, uh, you know, that's about $400. Okay. Um, and a couple other minor differences, but that, that's the majority of it. So the beautification committee had expected to spend about $1,000 on this. And that looks like that's pretty much going to be the case. Uh, the other segment is for um, the more landscaping around town. Uh, we hired uh, Peter Morgan. So you're not looking for action on this tonight because that would be the joint discussion. It's really up to the joint discussion. It's more um, uh, that beautification has committed the funds yep. to it. Uh, the village is reviewing this right now. Uh, as you recall, the town had uh, given our tacit approval pending the village's uh, agreement, but we didn't have a dollar figure assigned yep. to it at the time. Uh, we just had our estimate, mm -hmm. and now we've got a dollar figure to go with it. Okay. Um, Can I make a quick comment? Yes. Compost by the yard is part of this quote. Maybe that's just for delivery. I don't know, but... Um, if the uh, solid waste management district isn't giving us compost as I thought they were going to be as part of our hosting agreement with the compost facility, we can. Uh, I've gotten uh, Stephanie Lockhart of Center for America's First Horse um, usually has compost that she's looking to give away and, or for a small donation to the organization. Okay. So that's always a good source of. Uh, Compost and that's yes. I, if that's not what you need, then I, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know, but that would be worth asking. Yeah, both are worth investigating. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, that might just be her delivery charge. I don't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Forty-eight bucks. Uh, probably purchasing it. Um. It's not a show stuff. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, the other parts we'll be hiring Peter Moynihan. Uh, we'll cover this at the joint meeting and make a specific decision on it. But uh, the idea of being to hire Peter Moynihan to work for the town and village again on landscaping. Uh, the we believe that some of the we believe that he did a pretty good job given the limited parameters, and that if we give him better instruction, we can get better results. So the idea is to target his actions and his maintenance on fewer and more specific tasks. Do you work by the hour or by the job? By the hour. So I think if we give him better direction, we'll get better results. Yeah. Uh, we paid him hourly? Yeah. I, I tell you, every time I drove through town, uh, when uh, the piano landscaping was going on, there was all this crowd of people around there he was talking to. I don't know whether he was explaining what he was doing or what the deal was, but. The one on um, Main right. Street? Yeah. So we discussed as a committee that we would not have him do that little swath because it takes a lot of time, energy, and annuals because they don't, you can't do perennials right. there. Right. We just didn't feel like that was a. A real high need spot um, and the best time of his best use of his time. So, um, more focusing here and um, the welcome signs, the welcome signs, and then hopefully, some really clear direction because mm -hmm. we were not, yeah, so uh, real bridges. Bridges. and the last one was we wanted to get some flowers planted oh, yeah. on uh, the town bridges, flower boxes, or I'd say the village, the town bridges in the village. Mm -hmm. And that particular spot where the piano was was a magnet for it. Yeah. Chit chat. We're not going to do that anymore. I, like I, I, I don't. I think that Peter did a good job, but I think that he spent a lot of time on areas that didn't have a good return. Uh, so I think that by tasking him with more specific 
you know, this is where we want you to spend your time, I think we'll get better results. Yep. And this year with Peter is kind of a transitional time because we're thinking that we might want someone with Andrea's expertise to design the, uh, the placements and the, around these other objects. Yeah. So you're phasing Peter out there. Well, that isn't phasing them out. This, this is, you know, we're going to put different, you know, the design and what's going in there might be changing. He would still be like a maintenance. Ma yeah. yeah. She, her expertise is really making a beautiful design, understanding how everything works and how it's going to look. And he would be more, you know, maintaining, weeding. And, yeah. and then if he wanted to take on something, he'd provide a plan the same way that Andrea has for this one. You know, that he could do something like that for a future project. Like, you know, we think that we're going to do maintenance here at the municipal building for this year, uh, but hopefully the next year or the year after, we can, once all the signing is done, uh, and we're talking about cutting down a couple of our uh, ash trees and other things that we might really attack the, uh, the landscaping here and try and have a, a nice upgrade. Uh, you know, and working, the idea being that we could work with a designer like Andrea uh, to get it going and then work with Peter for maintenance. But if Peter wanted to submit a design, we'd, you know, be happy to receive it. Okay, so we have a joint meeting. That's really for the joint meeting. Yep. Um, we've got money for both of them in the beautification budget. Yep. And the village said they were going to chip in some too. Right, the village has a, a certain amount. The total town expenses uh, for this is a little bit higher than the villages, but uh, the town has, and we can decide how we allocate a few things. Good. All right. Thank you. Recreation coordinator. So we've completed a uh, review. I've received feedback from uh, the search committee. We're going to be scheduling interviews over uh, this week. I'm going to be reaching out. Uh, hopefully next week we'll be holding the first round of interviews. Uh, then shortly after that, probably the week after, uh, we'll do our second round of interviews. Uh, we'll do background checks and references in between the first and second. and. Uh, you know, I, I, we're going to be pressed to complete hiring by, I think the original goal was July 9th, but we're not, we'll be pressed to make July 9th, but we're not, you know, way off track. Uh, we're in the neighborhood still. How's, how's the pool looking? Is it looking good? I think uh, the committee was pleased with the pool. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, uh, we've got. Did you see? Yeah. We got quite a few uh, additional resumes late in the game. Uh huh. Uh, I didn't know that. So that was uh, really good news, and and it was really nice getting the. I, some of the early candidates we had were great, but mm -hmm. it feels much better when you can choose from a wider yeah. variety. So even. You know, whether it was early or late didn't really have an effect. I don't think the committee knew when anybody came in. I think that was just, I didn't think that was relevant, so I didn't communicate that to them. Um, but even if we select the people from the beginning, it feels really nice to be able to look and compare them to a wider field and make that decision and feel a lot more confident about our decision. That, yeah, that's great. Yep. Thank you. So I'm, I'm very pleased with how that's going. Sheriff's sure, Department, just a information. Hey, I've got something for that. What are you doing? On that town meeting, we, I, uh, promised uh, that we would uh, start a summer uh, committee to research options for law enforcement coverage in the town of Johnson. And, uh, um, we discussed uh, doing this with Rocket and, and Hyde Park. I've had sort of casual conversations with individual members of, of those select boards. Um, they seem to like the idea. So how should we proceed? Um, 
should we formally approach them and ask them, or should we set up a committee with X number of people and looking for ideas on how we move forward? Do we uh, post for um, voter participation? We could, I mean, or we could answer select. I mean, I, we could hand select people as well that we know have experience in uh, emergency response, and uh, we could we could go either way. I'm wondering. I mean, first of all, do we want to include Walcott and Hyde Park in our study? Mm -hmm. I guess that's my first question. Board's thought. It, would it be piecemeal not to do that, or what would be the advantage of not not including them? Um, we control the whole thing ourselves, I guess. I don't see a great advantage. I think we should, but I want to mm -hmm. ask you guys. Mm -hmm. So two, you know, two people from each community, or so you get a six-person committee that could study this. I th you know, it brings in more resources to have you know, three communities, it may limit your choices somewhere because you have to be concerned about their choices. You can't go your own direction, but I I think we ought to ask them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just one of five. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's good. That's good. Your thoughts, Mike? We're pretty limited on what we're going to have for law enforcement, I think, don't you? Well, we only have a certain number of options. Right. Yeah, but you know, as as costs have increased, they haven't increased as a portion of. I mean, they've increased at the same rate as everything else has increased. But the voters at the town meeting really were clear that they had concerns and they wanted to explore some alternatives. I don't, you know, I've looked at alternatives and myself. I think they're not as good as what we currently have. But that's just me, and I want the community to be able to. So this would allow us to say, whatever we choose, we could say we looked and this is what we recommend now, or we looked and we don't recommend changing. You know, you're, we're just taking a look because the public is concerned about yeah. their money and... and or if there, here's what, yeah, if you're three, you know, we could contract with Morrisville, we could contract with state police. This is what, this is what it looked like. You know, there's how much coverage you get for this much money, that sort of thing. Right. Yep. And the thought of going somewhere else might sharpen a pencil to me. It might, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Roger's encouraging us to do this. So, um, yeah. he's, and I think he wants ideas from the community too, you know, because he's just seeing more and more pressure, mm -hmm. um, more concerns in the community. Right. Yeah, you may put the question out and it puts the question to rest. <laughs> I don't <laughs> necessarily think. think. Well, I don't know if it will, but, but you know, <laughs> you we'll never put it to rest. No. Well, you know, we we might we quiet it down for a while. You know, we we yeah, you know, this was done before. You know, We've done this before. Yeah. I think it's a good exercise. So I think everybody's in agreement that Woolpit and Hyde Park ought to be part of it, and they'll. I mean, they want to be part of it too, correct? It sounds like they, it sounds like informally. I would I would want to approach. I think after this, I would want to approach each of their boards formally and and propose it. And how many? You're thinking like a couple reps from each town. Yeah, I'm looking for feedback on that too. I'd like three, but that makes a nine-person committee, which is kind of big. A six-person committee is. Well, don't we pay? Aren't we the biggest contributor? Maybe maybe so we maybe get more we numbers. get three yep. two two or something like that. I mean, Hyde Park's pretty close to yeah, we're about, yeah. But this is this That's isn't a rewarding thing. No. This is an idea thing. Yeah. This is an idea thing. Right. Yeah. So two or three from each community. Yeah. Do so you wanna run it through the other boards and then come back or do you Yeah. Okay. The number should be based on contributions. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll propose that. Good. Well, thank you for looking into yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Light Industrial Park update. Oh, by the way, good PR story for you. 
I think we had no chance to uh, see it, but um, I didn't. Uh, they didn't give you much time. No. They didn't sure. it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they had about uh, one sentence over here. Yeah. Yeah. There, he just went on and on and on. <laughs> on, and on. I saw him there. I wanted to stop and get on, but I figured he wouldn't let me in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had that pretty well rehearsed, too. You know the question they were going to ask you, and you had that right down pat. Well, we discussed some of the uh, background, but we. That was live. I didn't know exactly what he was going to do. But you did a good job. You, you acted just like you had that right on the tip of your tongue. Well, I lived it a year or two ago. <laughs> yeah, Thank you did a good job. Thank you. Um, well, so the big news is uh, that we're in for the Northern Borders Regional Commission grant. Uh, so that's a half million dollar grant that we've submitted for. Uh, it will. If it's awarded, it will cover 50% of the infrastructure improvements, a little bit less than 50% of the infrastructure improvements. Um, the good things about the grant, I think we've been over it, but just a quick reminder, the good things about the grant is that it's very flexible in terms of matching uh, and that it has a relatively long completion time. Uh, so that gives us a little bit of time to come up with the other half a million dollars that we need to complete the grant. Uh, we're targeting the EDA, the uh, Economic Development Association, another federal grant, uh, for the bulk of the remainder of the funds. Uh, that would, qualification, the, the matching for that is on a sliding scale based on uh, our economic statistics. I think that we're going to be matching at 70%, uh, excuse me, we'll be matching at 30% and they'll contribute 70%. Uh, we might do a little bit better and match 80-20 instead of 70-30, but that'll come down to uh, final numbers and, and their determination. I've had an initial meeting with them, with the EDA, but we'll, I'll continue that discussion as it goes forward. Um, the big thing I want to make everybody aware of, we always kind of knew that when we're talking about these, that we're going to be left with a 20% match uh, at the best, between a 30 and a 20% match at the end. Uh, but that's still a lot of money when we're talking about a million dollar project. Um, so that is going to we'll be able to match a lot of it with in-kind contributions from our highway department uh, now that we've been always able to do that in the past uh, but mm -hmm. you know this is also something that we might be borrowing from our economic our revolving loan fund uh, and other tasks to try and complete so, yeah, we always kind of knew this was coming, but I wanted to yeah. make sure that we're really... When do we find out about this grant? Uh, I believe this one is the end of July. Okay. Good. We might do good on our bids for construction and a bit more bang for the buck that way. Well, and uh, we also are out for final engineering. I think everything's going to come out in a wash and that the final engineering is not going to change the cost very much. Um, there's a couple places I know we're going to save money and there's a couple places I know where it's going to be more expensive. Uh, so in my estimate and talking to Ruggiano Engineering, we're anticipating it kind of coming out in a wash. But maybe we get luckier and uh, we don't spend as much money as I'm afraid we might spend on stormwater mitigation. Are we going to stick with the Ruggio? Uh, no. Well, they're going to submit a bid, but right, but it's it, it's not awarded to them. Yeah, it, it's right. we, just that because we we had some work with them before on this whole thing, but yeah, and they've been extremely helpful in terms of serving as a consultant for me when I've been preparing uh, the grant documents. You know, they've been able to answer questions and. Uh, help me with some updated numbers on current estimates because the original grant proposal was almost 10 years old. Uh, you know, so how much does it cost to do whatever construction in today's dollars rather than 2010 dollars? 
how 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 much did we enunciate that that uh, this is going to be done with no no tax dollars? You know, that we, I thought we indicated this is going to be done with grants and stuff. Back when we we did share that, but um, you know, there always is a a match of some amount. Usually, we can tuck it in on in kind. Yeah, this may actually right. be more than that. And we're going to try to this time, yeah. too. But okay. I think that we were clear about that. That it was certainly never the intention that we would uh, get it, that we would, that we were definitely clear of having a cash contribution to get this done. That's always been our goal is to do it without a cash contribution, but. Um, I don't think we ever said it was going to be wholly funded by grants with no cash contribution. No. Yeah, that, that, that's just, that's a risk that's been there all along. And mm -hmm. I just, there's nothing about this that's really changed about that level of risk. It's not more likely or less likely. It's just getting, you know, a couple steps closer to reality. So I wanted to remind everybody that that was getting you know that that's out there in the future. But even if we had to pay twenty percent, we're still getting a pretty good deal out of it. Yeah, yeah, we're we're, and to be sure, we w without some major changes, uh, we can't afford to contribute more than twenty or thirty percent. Uh, you know that. If this comes back and we're, we're denied the EDA funds, uh, we're going to be out there looking for more, more money that we can't pay 50% of this project. Right. We can't pay half a million dollars. And it's going to get kicked down the road uh, a few more years. You know, that that. But it is a good use for our revolving loan fund. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as lots sell in the future, you know, that would bring back money into the town paying down the, the bond or, or the uh, loan and, and re, uh, put money back in the revolving loan fund. Yep. Okay. Well, good luck. Or keep our fingers crossed, I guess. Uh, is there any old business before we get into the items we added? Uh, I want to very quickly set Evergreen set Evergreen Cemetery. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of this with uh, Duncan also, but I wanted to give the board a quick update. Um, there is a it's looking increasingly likely chance that we might not be able to get the fence repair done before Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been I've been working on that, but they haven't made it out yet this week. Um, so uh, it, we're on there. We've got the request out there for them, but they haven't given us a calendar date. They've assured me that they'll be out here as quickly as possible, but we are still waiting on that getting completed. Okay. Have the sergeants purchased their lots yet? I've finished the deed with the sergeants. Uh, he'll be in to pay it and sign it. Uh, when he comes back north, right? Yeah, when it, next time he's in town. Uh, they're headed out of town and when they come back through. I was a little bit late getting it out to him, um, you know, just tidying that up. I wanted to clear up some language that uh, I, I had some concerns about in a previous draft. Good. So you're still talking to our attorney about this? I spoke to our attorney about the deed, yes. I wasn't questioning or, or trying to undermine the board's decision on this, but I, before yeah. issuing a deed, I yeah, you reviewed gotta... it with the attorney. Okay. Okay. Any yep. other items? No, that's it. Could, um, so, sorry. Um, Old business, could we make sure that the, um, I see conflict resolution training, but our, our um, uh, 
the uh, training or workshop that we would like to do for the board and the community on racial yes. justice and things like that. Mm -hmm. Gets on there. I've had a few people ask about that recently. The blighted building ordinance has made it to the list. Is that not on here? I, I, could have lost somewhere in the I could have sworn that used to be on here, and I must have. Are you still keeping a really <laughs> list of no. ongoing things? No. Well, the Bible stopped somewhere. <laughs> it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah. Actually, what's under old business is the power washing, <laughs> which is something we, Duncan had sent us a note. Yeah. And our understanding was, I thought we had told them to go ahead. Yeah. No, we never told them to go ahead and spend two thousand dollars. The power washing the historical society. Oh, no, we never. No, we're not going to spend two thousand dollars to wash that building. That's what it is. Going to do. We we didn't ever discuss that. Uh, exactly what was going to happen on that nothing was ever decided to go ahead and do that i can't believe that you can't wash that building right from the ground with the state and guard molds oh no way you don't think so with they've got those sprayers that has the soap that goes automatically in it and you put a layer of soap on it and then wash it off i think that building is Caked on. It, it needs nasty some bad work. It, it's pretty sorry looking. We need to get out of landlord business. That's what we need to do. Well, this isn't the landlord issue. This is a building we own. That I understand that, but we're the landlords of that building. And so we're looking to expend $2,000 of town funds to clean the building off. And if we didn't own that building, we wouldn't have to worry about it. But So we need to move forward to try to get that building out of the town. Should we close the historical society? No, I'm not saying that. But there were supposedly discussions on whether or not that the town, the historical society, wanted to own that building or not. They decided they do not. Well, they, so that's the new thing. They finally made a decision that they want to stay under the town umbrella. Uh -huh. When did that happen? Just recently. They sent, Duncan sent us an email that- First I've heard of it. Well, that's new news. It is new news. No. They may have wanted to buy it, but there were complications to buying it too. You know, like do they get their uh, do they get the who owns the artifacts? So it was uh, well the community voted to purchase the building. We currently own the building and I think it's our obligation to wash it so that it doesn't look so nasty. True, uh, I understand that. It's right there yeah. at the edge of town. It's the, one of the first buildings people see and uh, could really look nice if we cleaned it up. I think we need to, one way or another, we need to get it washed. I just can't believe it's gonna cost $2,000 to pressure wash it. Well, we got, we got quotes, right? From, yes. They weren't $2,000, right? Pretty close, $1,800, right? He might have been seventeen, but yeah, it was. And then there's a rental of a yeah. Or yeah. yeah, so you get a couple of grand. I was in your position when we talked about this last time. I talked from my experience about washing my building on School Street with a garden hose, <laughs> and, and, and it was uh, clear from people who knew something that I wasn't going to get off what they had on that building. I, don't, I mean, it, it's like. Um, is it metal siding or it's metal siding and wood trim yeah and the other thing is that we don't right now i think want to invest in repainting the wood trim right so we but the hazard of, of doing it from the ground is that we could end up spraying and damaging the painted wood trim and having to go up and repaint probably got to do that anyway yeah wait with the power washing the power yeah, too far. If you get a, a pressure washer, you can put the nozzles on and it, it'll be like a, a knife spray yeah. that you can come right up close to wood trim without hitting it. And you have a lot of control where you mm -hmm. spray. But the problem that, that I found on my house that has aluminum siding is you gotta be direct on to that panel to make it work. So you can't be spraying you know, mm -hmm. 10 feet up, it, it just, 
it's like a garden hose ring in it. It doesn't really clean it. But you gotta be sort of direct on and then you can on mine you can clean it. But I think that's the same thing you need for that. Hope. Have you put in a bid on this? No, I didn't. <laughs> and I don't want it. <laughs> I think the, the bid they got for the actual power auction was pretty reasonable. It was the it was the lift the, lift, the lift rental that was yeah. really gonna kill us. And then there was some talk about having that uh, rental donated from a local uh, philanthropist, so um, our local rental company. So I, I think it's a lot more likely that we might be able to get it through the town, might get a better rate than. Yeah. That, so but I, I don't know about donating. I think we can explore that, and, but we just got to get it. We got to bite the bullet. It's it's uh, kind of embarrassing to have that building look the way it does. So the board prepared to take some action here. So what's the price? Not to exceed two thousand. So moved. Do we have a second? Lacking. Second, second for okay. discussion. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? So where does this money come out of? Which? Because we are building maintenance. Building maintenance. Okay. Can, if it's not, with this motion, if it's not to exceed, can you call and find out what rental is and determine whether or not, if we provide the lift, what the price would be? Yes. So we, we could attempt to renegotiate the based on... Yeah, I can pursue getting the cheapest possible. Um, the quote we got for is that the best use of your time, or is that something that the historical society? The historical society has asked me to get involved with uh, doing this, getting the lift at least. Okay. Um, they they don't have authorization to sign for it. So they're concerned that if they don't have an authorization yeah. to uh, okay. sign for it, that they aren't going to get the real yeah. yep. town rate for it because they aren't town representatives in this capacity. I'd rather see fifteen hundred, but the motion is made and second is done. Well, the expectation is it probably will come in under fifteen hundred. If we only I'd say closer to 1500 but I only need the lift for one day versus two, which I don't know why with a lift you couldn't get done in easily in one day. But. <laughs> if somebody knew what they were doing, they could get done in several hours. Uh, that's sort of what I would do. Yeah. I mean, I'd do it for 5000 but... <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that in the meeting. Although it's on TV. On TV. I think we should let him correct this next week. Say <laughs> <laughs> he underbid. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those favor sing for the same line. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Aye. One negative. Motion passes. Any other old business? No. Going There's got to be something in there. <laughs> we, we kicked too much stuff down the road here. We still got to be something in there we need to do. We, we have a lot of things we need to do. We just crossed off washing power, power washing the Holcomb House. Yeah, but how many more does that leave us? It's quite a few. Yeah. So on the blighted building ordinance, which you're going to add, <laughs> yes. what does it take to move it ahead? Uh, we need to issue comments on the last draft that we received. Now, wasn't the draft that we received a, uh, <clears throat> there were two of them, right? Yep. It was with a vacant building permit and without a vacant building and permit. And one, I mean, one was clearly not, a, not as good as the other one, I thought, and, and you, you thought that also. Uh, I like the vacant building permit. Uh, and that was the major distinction between the two uh, most recent drafts that we've received. And those were came out of their can library, right? Yeah, the, these were uh, ordinances they'd written for other towns. Uh, the vacant building, if I'm remembering the drafts correctly, I think the vacant building permit was a little tacked on. Um, it wasn't central to it, like we had tried to make it. 
uh, but ours also we didn't like the way ours was functioning. So maybe it maybe it would work better if it wasn't uh, a central like kind of linchpin piece to uh, dealing with void buildings. Can we ask them what they would need from us? Our attorney asked them what they would need for us to generate a, a vacant building ordinance for Johnson. Sure. I mean, they just, you know, say, what do you need? You know, well, we need to know, you know, ask them to, if they need us to define the problem, ask them what they need. Well, I, I think what we should do is, rather than asking them what they need, Specifically, I think we should tell them what we don't like about the kind of canned version they have. You know, where do we feel that this doesn't meet Johnson's needs and tell them why we think that this doesn't meet Johnson's needs. I think that might be a more constructive conversation. Was that their version or was that a canned version from the league? That was their version from another town, that they had written that with another community and receive permission to share it with us. Okay. Let's, well, this would be the chairs, but let's then, I would suggest we put that, we circulate it again, we put it on an, uh, on an agenda and we have a discussion on it. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's, if I recall correctly, it's one of the, when we talked about having the two meetings a month, that this was, that we were going to dedicate one of our meetings to reviewing the blighted building ordinance. Mm -hmm. That was a discussion as soon as I came on the board over three years ago, and we got about the same distance on that. I think it's been here since the building, the old sergeant house burnt on Stern Street. We have a building on 100 C that's uh, gonna fall into the river. And uh, we, the Board of Civil Authority abated taxes on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we probably need to talk to the individuals that own the building to see if they're taking those abated taxes and setting that aside for a fund to remove that building. Who's responsible if that building falls into the river? You got all that undermined uh, there that they've got the uh, barricade around it and the water is coming right in from the street into the basement. And that building needs to be torn down. Yep. There are plenty of buildings in this town that would, their demise would be beneficial to their neighbors and to this community. I bet you could come up with 15 easily. What probably should have been done by the Board of Civil Authority is ask the same question that I just did about what are you going to do with those abated taxes? You're going to set them aside for a fund to remove the building. If I was the landowner, I'd let it go up for tax sales. I'd never buy that one. <laughs> nobody would, but nobody wants it. And then it's of no use to anybody. But that's true, but you would think that the landowner would take some responsibility. Especially if they've owned it a number of years. If they wanted and, uh, the state to take responsibility. And they're not going to do that. So now the federal government is not going to take responsibility for that building. Well, that's certainly a building. If we address, discuss the vacant building ordinance, that could be could, that ordinance could be considered in light of that building and and other ones. That uh, did we didn't we suggest at some point in time we have an inventory of these? I think I, I think yeah. sitting in your office, I suggested that. And it's something that I think you and I have discussed. That yeah. it would be nice to know what ones we have, but it could be addressed with the the assessor, perhaps. That that if we have a meeting that on this, it might very well help us to to say, by the way, here's a list of buildings that our assessor thinks would qualify under this. So we have an idea of the scope of the problem. We need to put that right at the top of the old business. And we, may, we need to set a goal that by the end of the year, we'll have something done. It's a good goal. Yeah. So what's the approach? How do you, you want to 
go back through the attorney? Can we take some time on June 3rd to... No? No, I think we're going to be full on June 3rd, and that would conflict with the, uh, the um, dedication of that meeting to, yeah. to these subjects that we we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. You know, I would suggest... I think a work session sometime out in the future with this as the, you know, one or two or three of the topics like this, maybe old business, that we could try to chip away. Because when we have the trustee meeting, we have to have everything dedicated to it. Yeah. Virtual business and the trustees in town. Yeah. Uh, select board. You can't have anything. Stick a wrench in the works or something like this. So are you going to circulate what we had? I'll circulate what we've got on okay. our most current drafts. Um, Can you just circulate the one you think is most possible? Okay. Well, I'll, so I'll, we don't have to. I'll, I'll, I'll do a brief, brief review myself of the two. Uh, but I think I, we did it. I think I did have a preference, and I, yeah. I just need to refresh myself on it. You and I agreed on the preference. Yeah. Um, then I'll, I'll circulate that, and we'll. Go for plan that. on a review for that. Uh, hopefully, our July work session. Then. Well, that's a good question. What's the board's thoughts on July? You want to have two meetings in July, or or would you take uh, what would the first Monday? That's not first Monday's the third. No, sorry, first Monday's the first. The first of July. Well, we need a meeting for this tax rate. We do it uh, that early. Or is it? Probably. Okay. So we'll have to meet anyways. Okay, good. Never mind. Yeah, if it's the 1st of July, it shouldn't. Yeah. Work. Hopefully I'll present for that one and we can do the meeting, keep it to a couple topics. And, yep. uh, not go into midnight. Yeah. I might be squeaking back or not squeaking back by then. Yeah. After you send us down the river without a paddle. <laughs> Okay, uh, Duncan had made a request on the, what does he call that stuff? Whether we want to do any more of it? Yeah, the... <laughs> that wipe and wash or... <laughs> oh, yeah. Just something we put in the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheap way to go for cleaning cemetery stones. Yeah. Right up your alley. Wait, <laughs> I, I missed the whole thing. Uh, Duncan wants to know a little bit more about what we're, what we'd like to do out of the remainder for this year's cemetery maintenance budget. Um, when we were scheduled, when we were working on our budget for the year, we had that was one of the areas that we targeted for not spending everything that was allocated to that line item in the budget uh, in order to help balance the budget. Uh, we were going to underspend that one a little bit. Um, things are looking pretty good, so I think we can restore a little bit of funding to that. And I think that we can, you know, give Duncan, uh, you know, $1,500 to do a little bit more placement on the uh, thousand or fifteen hundred dollars to do a little bit more treatment of the uh i can't remember the name of the spray stuff like wash, whatever it is. yeah it's something like that if you spray it on you leave you let it penetrate yeah. and then you spray it off um it's a been a pretty effective treatment at washing the gravestones uh and yeah it, it cleans them up pretty well and it's much less labor intensive um the other thing that he would like some uh, time to do is uh, we had a lot of frost heaps. We've got a lot more tipped and fallen gravestones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're not really getting ahead at our current maintenance, cemetery maintenance schedule. Uh, we're not continuing to fall as far behind, but we're not not really getting ahead, but we also keep shorting that line item. So uh, just a minute, is he's looking, do we want to spend some more money current budget year to do this activity? 
So we cut we cut some of this, right? If, if I understood, and now yeah. things are looking good, so we don't have to. I would think that um, I'm thinking about Tuesday Night Live and buying equipment, and uh, what what uh, where there's the biggest bang for the buck and um, would be. What's that got to do with cemetery? Well, can't we transfer money within? Are we, don't we have control over the whole budget? Or am I wrong on that? We do, but uh, you're transferring from one line item to another. I mean, we could do that in a sh you know, short times, but that's not really what the intent of the budget that was approved by the voters was. I, th I think Tuesday Night Live will be okay with its GoFundMe thing, and yeah. I think it's going to be okay. Sometimes people judge a town by their cemeteries, and I think we need to spruce them up a little bit more. <laughs> See, now we're swapped because $1,500 is a lot of money, and you don't want to spend it on the Holcomb House because it was a lot of money. If but that was so visible and that the cemetery the thing, yeah, that's true. But the whole thing comes around with the Holcomb House is that number one, I, I think that that bid, no matter what it was, was too much money. But I understand what we get for our money when we have Duncan do work for us on our cemeteries. And so I feel as if that money is better spent than that other money on that bill. Even though I agree with you. It, it is going to spruce the building up, but it still comes around the whole deal, and I don't think we should be the landlord for that building. But we are the landlord for their cemeteries, and we are the landlord for the Holcomb House, even though I don't think we should be. Well, that's a fair answer. I just, I, uh, I'm thinking we spend a lot on cemeteries when we do have so many other priorities. So I but we have a lot, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of maintenance on the cemetery. And uh, unfortunately, you can spend an awful lot of money on cemeteries. I think what's missing in the Holcomb House is a spray and wash application. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. You can spray it out, let it soak in there for a little while, and just kind of spray it out. Maybe that'd work okay. I muddied the waters by bringing that up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take two issues and bring them both down. I, I went further afield. <laughs> so, uh, what's the thoughts on authorizing Duncan to do a little bit more stonework? I'd pass for the rest of the fiscal year, personally. Would you say that? I would pass on that for the rest of this fiscal year and worry about it next fiscal year. So, you don't think we should be? Spending any more money on their cemeteries this year? Correct. Huh? I would fix the. Maybe I don't understand the importance, but I would I would fix the stones that are going off, falling over, or frosting or broken. You know, that would be my priority as opposed to washing. You know the thing is, it's like you know, frame oil filters. You pay me now or pay me later. You uh, you let it go a little bit longer, it's going to take more man hours to straighten them out. And if you straighten them out now, you might get a lot more for the money. I do know Whiting has a lot of stones that are toppled over, bent, slanted, and all that. And it is very visible right there at that intersection. But so how much, how much more are we talking? I think the hundreds. <laughs> Sorry. I think 1500 is a good number, but it's pretty much whatever. I mean, there's enough work out there. Whatever we give right. him, he'll use. We couldn't spend enough to fix all. No, no, I know. Yeah. No. Thank you, motion. We authorize $1,500 to do some more, more work on our cemeteries. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Are we going to just let Duncan decide, or are we giving him direction? I, I think we could target it at the Whiting Hill. Um, I think that's our mm -hmm. 
most visible. Yeah. The Evergreen Ledge, I know, has a few tipped stones, uh, but like I said, there's so much work to be done everywhere that right. okay. we may as well continue to focus here or you know, if the board likes, we can... We are still is, selling. Is there, I mean, we have a motion in a second. Was there a preference in that motion? Um, which cemetery or worse stones or... Duncan has a good sense on what needs the most attention. And, uh, I would just soon leave it up to him. Okay. Is that general consensus of the motion? Looks like it is. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify the same aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. One negative. The motion passes. Uh, facility use agreement with the library. Legion. So the library has request for Legion Field and the oven on August 1st. August 2nd is a rain date. Um, they want to use Old Mill Park and the stage on July 23rd. And yoga for kids on July 25th at uh, Legion Field. Uh, presumably on the stage. Hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Neat. Uh, it's the board's pleasure. Approve, deny, or <laughs> approve with conditions. No conditions. There are there are people. Okay. Second. We've okay. got a motion to authorize and second any other discussion. No security there. Children's yoga. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say proud to say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Brian, you wanted to talk about a meeting you attended? So um, I attended a meeting uh, last Thursday and Friday in St. Albans for the Vermont City and Town Managers Association. Mm -hmm. uh, I attended a couple pretty good sessions. Uh, I emailed a couple of my thoughts to Johnson Works today, in particular about thinking about maybe trying to do something like a local entrepreneur's day of uh, taking out an ad in seven days or VT Digger or some someplace trying to get some advertising out and hosting a, a discussion for, you know, people who might be interested in starting a business uh, and using that as a, an avenue to promote the activity, the, the resources and things that we have here in Johnson to help people start a business. Uh, we can connect with our realtors and uh, property owners and, and hopefully make some good connections while we you know, promote the, our town and village revolving loan funds, uh, the revolving loan funds through the LEDC and, uh, and others. Um, I'm also thinking that that might be a decent time and also to get a few more activities going. I might talk to John and John Mandeville at LEDC and the college, and maybe we can get a training or two that we can do the same day uh, that new businesses might be interested in so that we can both capture people for a little bit longer period. Uh, we might also be able to capture different people if we can stay active for a longer period and also might do something advantageous for our existing businesses if we can do, you know, a intro to accounting. You know, like QuickBooks has come up a bunch of times, so mm -hmm. that's something that Johnson Works people would be interested in. Uh, so I'm investigating doing something like that for us. Uh, Actually, that's right in line with the phone call I got from Peggy Williams the other day. I was actually going to suggest, or I did suggest to her to, that Kyle might be to the Johnson Works, but it's right along this line of, of what tools are available, how to help companies come into Johnson. Uh, you know, I didn't think that we should take the lead on it, but uh, but if it's something you have in, in working with Johnson Works and, and all of that, it's, I think that's right up what she was trying to 
to get have a, a town wide meeting of some sort. Saint, a big part of St. Albans being successful right now, and I don't know if anybody's been to St. Albans recently, but it, it's really transformed. Mm -hmm. um, a big part of that is their local decision to be more involved in some of the things that they wouldn't necessarily normally be involved with it, with economic development. That they, that the town was buying up buildings and land left and right. Mm. Um, and then selling it back after they'd made improvements on it. They did a lot of this with a TIF fund so that they had, they had access to a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, and could leverage it by low interest rates. Um, but it did make me think a little bit more about what can we do to try to be more proactive? And I thought that this hosting thing is something that we could probably do for a relatively low investment. Uh, you know, that it would be a little bit of time, there'd be a little bit of money when it comes to advertising, but Johnson Works can probably contribute something for advertising, mm -hmm. if not the whole thing. Uh, we can go to the village and ask if they're willing to contribute something, kind of between the three of us hopefully get enough to get a decent size to add, uh, something eye-catching in a couple locations. Yeah. And again, it's it's taking a proactive step that, you know, we've, it's not really our responsibility, but uh, the mantra that they had in St. Albans was, you know, if, if we don't invest in our community, why is anybody else? <clears throat> uh, it sure fixed it up over there. It, it, it's hard to argue with the results. Yeah. I would agree. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of slumming through there 15 years ago. And we need to try to get ahead of what's going on in this community and turn it around, you know, the Packard Stearns, the Manchesters, the Plumbing Maine. I mean, we're losing. Yeah. I mean, we got the Druid probably, but that would only get us back what we've already lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm trying to think about how to be proactive about this. And I think that this is a, a something within yeah. reach that- yeah, Right, it can't hurt. You know, that this is not a huge lift for us. This, like I said, I'm, wanna, I'm hoping John will lend some expertise. Um, you know, I, I think that we can, with a little bit of work, gather a couple folks together. Um, you know, I, I was thinking I might try and leverage my wife to do something about data tracking. So you know, for people for doing inventory and things like that. Um, you know, try and leverage a few people that we know who can do little sessions and we can have, you know, an afternoon of, you know, we can use our, our space, so we don't have to rent anything. We can uh, use volunteers to teach classes. All we would really, we might be able to get away with just paying for ad space. Isn't LCPC, aren't they doing publications trying to attract people here? To they are. They had, and you know, I assume that that might be tied into the Brownfields area-wide planning. You know, do you uh, target uh, you target people's generic needs if you run a business, or do you target our attributes? Uh, clearly, when you see the the Viceland, uh, uh Arguments in front porch forum. There are a lot, and probably Peggy Williams that might be connected to this. There are lots of people who are strong advocates and love this community, and there's there we have saleable things, but we are still going backwards. How, you know, do you start with our strengths or do you start with generic? I think a little bit of both. Uh, I think that we want to. I want to capture. Uh, as a pretty wide audience, so I, I want to be a little bit generic, but ultimately I want to. I also want to interest people in Johnson, so we have to talk about what our strengths and characteristics are. Uh, I think actually thinking about that when we talk about there being brownfield money available and, and that things are in brownfields, how many people really know what that means? Maybe we need a maybe one of our things is a class on what does it mean to 
have a property that's, you know, targeted for redevelopment, like brownfield redevelopment. You know, so that we can, there, there might be some fear associated with uh, some folks about what does it mean if I buy, you know, the Parker and Stearns or the Manchester property, what am I going to be on the hook for? And we can provide a little basic explanation about the liability protection that you receive. We also, um, Coleman's Pit MSI was interested at some point. Are there are they following up on that at all? I mean, is that, is that another? They were going to basically rehabilitate it or, or end it, and and uh, looking for investment money in in for industrial. I believe that they're still looking, but I haven't been in touch with them too recently. Chris mm -hmm. Johnson works. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, this is this is a new idea that Brian just um, emailed me about. But yeah, I mean, we we um, yeah, we're we're concerned. We're we're also trying to be more proactive. We've uh, just recently put a trifold flyer together, listing all the revolving loan fund options, something like physical that we can hand to uh, potential business owners. Um, we've got, uh, we put together a, a flyer that we're gonna give to all the Airbnb people that have the current businesses to hand to their folks at stake because they've asked us for some kind of um, downtown reference guide for their um, for their uh, people that stay with them so we're yeah we're trying to we're trying to get materials together to to distribute um, but we're you know we're we're also feeling a little a little lost I mean so many of us are just also holding on by a thread <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of all in survival mode right now mm -hmm. quite frankly mm -hmm. um and um you yeah. know so we're we don't have a lot of biggies for tools but yeah. we have that tax stabilization yeah plan. yeah we've listed it all in our okay, brochure yeah okay. both village side town side regional side <laughs> yeah we've, we've got it all um a little bit off of Johnson Works, I've been meeting with Casey Romero. Um, mostly Casey and I have been communicating about trying to get a food truck on um, our village green or a coffee cart, at least for the summer when we have people coming off the rail trail. To, so we have some kind of eatery for folks to, to, you know, to draw them into the village. We have um, Jen Burton doing the mural to get people off the rail trail into the village. We're, um, we're going to help with the uh, rail trail um, bike a thon that's going to happen in June. Um, and I've literally been reaching out to every contact I have, whether it's in New York City, here, where I'm <laughs> just saying we've got all these great, you know, these properties, storefront properties. Are you interested? Are you interested? We're, I'm, I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to work the channels. And we've got a lot of really good bites on places, but then they go and visit the borough house or the Wicked Wings building and they're like, too much? Yeah. It's, A, it's overpriced, and, and then the amount of maintenance that you know it needs, it's just doesn't make sense to sink that much money into a place that you haven't even you know opened for business yet. Hogback Snacks is definitely closed permanently. Um, so that's another could be potential <coughs> for sale. Well, that wasn't an economic issue as much as it was. Uh... I don't, yeah, I've heard different things. I don't okay. really know. But didn't they take some a revolving loan? Not for that. Not for that. Okay. Oh, for this building. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's tough. On paper, we look like, uh, of course, you would want to invest in this town. Mm -hmm. We're a college town. We've got the studio center. We've got, you know, on paper, we look really 
attractive. But then, um, but we've got this issue of landlords that are sitting on their properties, asking too much money, not putting a dime into it, and and um, and then we're all battling online stuff. I mean, it's yeah, amazing just our business in the last five years how we've really felt that. I mean, we literally have people coming in on their phones price checking against Amazon. It's like. <laughs> You know. Um, so anyway, I think this That's is a good incredible. idea. Yeah. I think this is a good idea. I think we're all trying to. <laughs> we're all really trying. Uh, so, also at the conference, I, uh, I presented at, at a uh, panel about economic development. That was uh, outdoor recreation is economic development. I had some pretty good conversations. I think that we're. It reiterated a lot about what we can do and you know what we need to do about uh things beyond field sports trails uh yeah. you know things like the bike track and, and the others um, so that'll be an ongoing development issue um and then two other pieces uh one uh, as you might recall i was on the board of directors for the vtcma uh they asked me to serve as the vice president of the vtcma now great good uh, i accepted that the other thing is they have also asked me to serve as uh, vermont's coordinator for the national conference uh, so, so you got road trips i'm going to have a couple road trips uh, uh Nashville and Toronto uh, in October of this year and October of next year. Okay. Um, this year, the funds will mostly no come from uh, uh, VTCMA, the IC and the ICMA. Uh, but for Toronto, um, it's more expensive than the professional development I've typically been doing. Uh, but I m might ask to split the cost with the town or something like that receive some help paying for it but okay. uh it is something that i volunteered to do without you know uh really discussing it with anybody so i know kind of the expense that i volunteered for um you know that it's like i said it's more expensive than the professional development i typically engage in uh, but I think it's going to be pretty valuable for me, and I hope I can continue to bring more kind of new ideas back to the town. Well, I like the idea you just proposed. Yeah, it's very good. Anything else? Uh, that's it from that conference. That's all I had for additional items. If there's no other business. Well, but, uh, a while back, uh, actually quite a while back, we had discussed about sending a letter to uh, corporate headquarters of Dollar General yeah. for them to uh, get rid of that hideous sign. Whatever became of that? I don't think we heard anything back. Uh, I can look it through. Got, it got sent to them? Yeah. Okay. I can look through our, you know, Susan does a really good job about making note of all our received mail as it comes in. So if I'm received it and missed it uh you know i'll do a quick search of the stuff that susan ha has made of our received mail and make sure there's nothing dollar general related in that it is a hideous song mm -hmm. anything oh, else i drove back actually the conference in st albans i stayed here rather than getting a hotel so i drove back late a couple nights and that was Garishly bright when everything else is. Really? Uh, it's like the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we discuss anything right now? Yeah. You got something else? Well, you know, the, I thought of this for quite a while and I've never seen it get going. I just thought I'd like to run for the board. I just wondered if the board would be interested in, in uh, sponsoring an annual tire sale and swap event. Doesn't the county do that? What's that? Doesn't the county do that, or there's a group? 
Well, if the governor gets involved in a deal where they turn in tires and then they right. they give them the charity and everything else, but you have a lot of times people will train vehicles or whatever and they'll have a, a set of tires and uh, either lay them by the road or whatever. It, it would be kind of a neat deal to have an event, like an annual tire swap and sale. And, you know, you open your trunks up or whatever and line them up over here to Mill Park and have your tires set out. People come through and buy them from here or trade tires or, you know, I don't, I just kind of thought of it and uh, wonder if anybody else would support it. Good for recycling too. It is kind of amazing how many front porch forum posts are about tires. That's right. <laughs> yeah, That's really I want to get rid of tires. Then it would be a way for the community to get together. Somebody could sell hot dogs, or maybe we get Ben and Jerry to get some ice cream out or something. Mm -hmm. Turn it into a community event. Mm -hmm. well, this past weekend, the Historical Society had the, yeah. their flea market in the basement over at the Masonic Hall. Right. You might be able to tie those together. If, you know, have a flea market here or there, tire swap there. Uh, sure. Maybe even a community-wide different things like that. A, a tire sale. Yeah, yeah. Did, like do a few neighborhood garage sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's going to organize? What's that? <laughs> Thompson works. That's just it. Ideas are great. It's the actual oh, yeah. making them happen. Yes. <laughs> poor Scott Meyer, he got roped into doing the our portion yeah. of the rail trail, and he, I can tell, he just has never organized it. <laughs> He's overwhelmed. When Mark Woodward does Woodward does those sales in the village in the summer, people go yeah. nuts. And, I mean, we sell great stuff at a really low price. People come from everywhere, yeah. and it's yeah. It really brings people to, to so maybe that would be the weekend to coordinate it. And yeah, he did it at his sister's house last year. Yeah, it was kind of a quiet affair up there, but when he does it right here in the village, it's like people, people come from far and wide. Well, maybe we could ask him if he's doing it, and that knowledge could be circulated for at your entrepreneur's thing. You know, it, it could well, be, you know. Or the tire swap or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Get everything all tied together. Yeah. Get people to come to Johnson. Yeah. You're right. It's just going to organize it. It's Bring your used tires. Bring your used <laughs> tires. Yeah. And don't leave them here. You know, you, you, well, yeah. And you could have parameters, you know. Yeah. Usable tires. You know, all these, you know. It's certainly beneficial to the people who need the tires in exchange. It's kind of like... You, you want to be the Uber of tires. Um, and tires are so stinking expensive, too. Yeah. Wild. You got any other ideas? Anybody else got anything? Okay, we'll stand adjourned at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Oh, ideas. Yeah, ideas. Yeah, ideas. Yeah, ideas. Yeah, ideas.